Welcome back. As always, we have, well, as always, today we're going to have the finals <coughs> of the Masters Coliseum 7, which will be played in best of nine format. And that means one thing and one thing only. After today, Masters Coliseum 7 is going to be over. And we'll be looking forward to Masters Coliseum 8. <laughs> That's going to be it. Let's see if... Uh, I can't recall what Lambo messaged me. He messaged me yesterday. I think he will be here, but I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see about that. All right, what's up, uh, Riven? Once again, you're first. Congratulations, buddy. Nice try, Heaven. You got second. Morning, morning. All oh, right, I need my phone at some point. Hello, hello. How's you all doing? Um, what was I gonna do? Set up my uh, YouTube thing as well. Yeah, it's annoying that with the dual streams, you need to uh, you need to still manually do some crap. It's every time it's a, it's a struggle for me. I'm not a good manual worker at all. I'm not a manual laborer. I'm a man that likes when everything is done automatically, and I don't have to think about anything. It's not the case here at all. Oh god, I'm misclicking. Things are going wrong. Was it analytics? It is analytics. There we go. Can I still win the 20, 42k or, or am I too late? You're perfectly in time, Zarasar. You're still in time. Harston versus Loco would be amazing. I don't think I'm going to be playing as Loco anytime soon. I, I wouldn't mind playing with Loco, Loco sometimes. Like some 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 co-op or something or some something else. I feel like that would be pretty fun. I always enjoy everything I do with Loco. He's with videos together and stuff. Or just hanging out. He's a funny guy. <clears throat> Very nice. I'm going to just grab my phone real quick so I have uh, everything properly set up. Give me a second. And actually, before I do that, I can show you guys the commercials we're watching today because, boy, are they beautiful ones more. We have... Yes, there we go. Ghastly being chased by the guy with the boot. All right. Let's see what we're going to do today. We'll have to wait to see if Lambo's going to join us. Uh, I'm not sure about that yet. Oh, my camera a bit smaller. It's too big like this. Cut off a part here. It is the perfect location. <coughs> Watch a Terran who got to GM. Do you have any ideas for good builds for each matchup for Protoss? I feel no one makes build order guides anymore. Uh, so, so you, you want to know the reason why no one makes build order guides? Or why you aren't seeing the build order guides? It's because they always perform poorly. So you're not getting them recommended ever. The only way to find build order guides is by looking for them. There are people that make build order guides as like their thing. They just do build order guides. I know, I'm not sure if Hushang still makes stuff, but he always used to do it. <clears throat> the problem with it, with him is, is that there's a very limited audience. Th this is the thing with build order guys is, is that everyone asks for them and no one watches them. It's, it's really wild, actually. So they're usually initially some of your worst performing videos. But what's funny is that over time, they start performing better. Because people that watch them will re-watch them again and again and again. So that video will start with very low views and not get boosted at all by the algorithm. And then manually people will find it much more than other videos. So the reason why you don't see it is because it feels bad to have this video always perform significantly worse. And also because I think it's really difficult to... I think a lot of build orders, they kind of feel the same from a creator's perspective. 
Maybe. That's not actually true. I could do something. I could do something. Yeah, I could. I mean, I made a, the three gate blink guide. I like that one. Sorry to say, guys, but there's about a 0% chance that Hero is going to beat Cero in the best of nine. Let's see what Aligluck like, has to say about all of this. I don't like using, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Just random people saying it. Oh, we have A Cow and Lucius becoming level two subscribers on YouTube. Thank you very much, guys. That's very cool. <laughs> well, well, welcome. Welcome to the club. The club of level two subscribers. <clears throat> I feel like the insight you provide together with just the guide is really helpful. Yeah, I look. I like making guides as well. The, the, another thing with making guides is is that it feels like um, I'm always afraid of doing things wrong. Um, and there's a, a a balance that I'm walking as well, right? Because I don't want to. It feels a bit bad, but. If I think a build is really, really good at that moment, I don't want other people to really play it. And I know that the other top tosses, they might watch the video too, and they might start playing it. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want the most recent thing to be out there. I have a lot of builds that I can just put where I'm like, hey, this, this, this is old enough now, and it's still very, very viable, and it's still being played. But like some things, I'm like, ooh, this is my little, this is my dirty little secret. I don't want to share it with the rest of the world yet. If that makes any sense. What was I going to do? I was going to go to Aligulak. Man, you guys are stressing me out with all your questions. Uh, 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 I will be your dirty little secret. Let's see what happens if it's a best of one. Uh, best of nine is what we want. <clears throat> the chance of Hero winning a best of nine, according to Aligulak, is going to be... Oh, I can just show you guys on the screen, can't I? Look at this. Poof! Look at this. We have... There's a 1% chance that Hero wins 5-0. There's an 8% chance that Serral wins 5-0. And the most likely outcome is a 5-2 win for Serral. And if Hero wins, the most likely outcome is a 5-4, which would be sick. There's legit a 1 in 10 chance that we're going to get a 5-4 in favor of Hero. That would actually be hype. 74% for Serral, 25.88 for Hero. I mean, it's going to be a match. Like, no matter what you think of it, it's going to be a match. That isn't too bad? Yeah. People are really bad at... At kind of mentally parsing percentages anyway. So they'll they'll see something like 75% and they'll say, oh, Sarah's going to win. Which is probably true. But also 25% is a pretty high percentage, you know? Like, it is not completely unrealistic here. Uh, it's not completely unrealistic for Hero to win at all. Like, it's actually really far from completely unrealistic. It's very realistic, one could even say, rather than using double negatives. <clears throat> How many builds will Serral be saving for Katowice? Um, I don't think... Uh, Serral's not much of a saver. You know, Cero is an iterator. He plays uh, a style or a direction of StarCraft 2. And then he he tries to slowly but surely just kind of improve that style. And he's capable of playing quite a few styles as well, but usually he, he tends to float around one thing versus one type of opener. And then I'll have multiple ways of getting there. I, Serral, Serral to Katowice will come with one or two builds that are aggressive in nature, pre-planned builds. But everything else, Serral is the proverbial water. 
or just the actual water, not even proverbial. He's just water. He flows. If you put saddle in a bottle, he becomes the bottle. <laughs> what else is there? What else can you do with with, with saddle? Saddle can app. Saddle can flow. So it. He kind of just goes with the game and then tries to bring it back, like gently moves it back to his attention. Serral plays StarCraft like people practice mindfulness, you know? Where you always... He doesn't get upset that, you know, that he gets distracted by side quests in the game. Like how when you're trying to practice some type of mindfulness, you know, your mind, your, your mind might wander. And you just bring your attention back to the breath. And that's what Serral does. He brings the, the game back to his... To his little, you know, his little river that he flows down to the the, the eventual finish, the win, his win conditions. That's where the that's where the river always ends in. That's where he goes, and he just slow he slowly brings it back into normalcy. That's that's just how Serral plays. He sometimes plays builds. Funnily enough, I think Serral has allint me more than he has allint most people. He 12 fooled me a lot of times. He road rushed me a lot of times. I don't know why this is, but it is uncanny how many... Personally, I believe he's afraid of me. And he should be scared of breaking his never losing a map streak for the past six years. But the amount of times he's 12 fooled me is really crazy. Like, it, and, and the road rush. And I'm not the only one that has noticed this. That he changed it up more often than not. That means he's afraid of my preparation. Or he thinks <laughs> that I predictably play too greedy. But I want to go with he's afraid of my preparation. We have a, <clears throat> a relatively high amount of links here initially. Um, ooh. You're going to move out and... What the hell is this? this got, did this get scouted? A hero is dead? Probably. Yeah. Well, this was a really good first game. Some of you might not believe that this was actually a good first game, but this actually was a very fun one. We spent three and a half minutes thinking about how Serral relates to water, and then Serral found the gateway and killed it. Um, Hero right now is in a pretty awful position. Serral has a gold base, in which you can also take the Rich Vespin Geyser. All of these uh, adept pressures, by the way, can be held with pure Ling. And I love that he decides to go for a Baneling Nest over a Roach Warren in this case. I think this is a beautiful call. The reason why he was thinking of a... Okay, this scout is huge. Holy crap, this is a big scout. This is actually a massive scout because it tells Serral so much about this game, about the position that he's in. He sees the Forge, he sees the Twilight. That means there's no Twilight and that means there's no Glaives. So Serral right now, he's actually gonna Baneling bust, I think. Wait, I said that yesterday. And then Lambo made fun of me for the next six minutes. But this is a lot of links for a, a relatively low amount of adept. I'm afraid now of my own calls. This is what Lambo did to me. Okay, it's just gonna be more drone. Actually, just I think it's too many links though. If you scout that there's not gonna be glaives, I feel like that might have been slightly high in the link count. He potentially still gets to cancel on this base. He's following this up with a roach warren. This is why I'm not invited today. Are you coming over or not? We're, we're all waiting for you, Lampo. Yeah, okay, that's a good cancel as well. He's building a lot of links. I'm very surprised by this amount of links that Serral's producing. I like this run by, I think this is good. Time to come over always? Yeah. Wait, let's uh, wait for this run by, then I throw Lambo in here. Quickly, where are you, Lambo? Hit the button. I know, I know, you guys can't see nothing. This is what happens when you tab out of it. Okay, sorry. Still sorry. Yeah, Hello. Hello. Okay, I figured it out. No? <laughs> nice. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? Oh, it is actually going to be a Baneling boss, though. Look at that. It's the latest Baneling boss I've seen in my life. Yeah? 
It also didn't really work. Yeah, it, I, yeah. I guess you can call this one a bit just kind of with a lair afterwards, and he is making drones. He 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 definitely over defended. Like I don't think this was initially planned to be offensive, and then he had the units, and he was like, okay, maybe I can bust the gold. Now hero has a gold, and Sarah's position is not that great anymore. I'm not a fan of that. Not a yeah. fan of that at all here, Lambo. It felt like the game should have been over after the first uh, gateway spot. He built so many links, and I don't quite understand why he continued building them after scouting the Forge plus Twilight combination. Yeah, it was a mistake. I think it's very difficult to read games like this, because no one... Like, Hero just freestyles, and no one else plays this, these builds. So it's difficult to know exactly where you're at. But, uh, yeah, Hero was trying to... While you were going on with the water, he was trying to blind counter the gold base, but Yona actually went with the triple helmet opener on this map and didn't get the gold base first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it always should have been terrible for Hero. Uh, I agree with that. Especially after he even sent the second overlord, they're expecting it, which is pretty sick. Are you sitting further away from the mic today, Lambo? People are saying you're, you sound low. Uh, not really, but I can up it on my end a bit. Okay, is it, is it better now? Probably, wait. I, I, can, I think it has to do with this. <clears throat> I think the game sounds are just too high. All right. Hero's gonna be moving out across the map. Has better upgrades right now. Uh, has a fake Colossus in there. I don't think that's gonna fake anyone though. And this push is gonna get stopped. This should be a recall, right? If he yeah, doesn't recall, that's idiotic. Yeah, he he tries to trade for as long as possible, but he's just gonna lose more units than he yeah. he really should have because the sentries were always gonna go down. But the huge zealot warping into the main base actually at the same time, and he even gets out with some of the stalkers. Not bad. If these uh, Zealots had charged immediately, that would have been nice, but charge has finished at this point. Plus one armor is done as well here for Hero, so these bad boys are actually trading relatively well. Zero still at a decent supply advantage, though. Uh, it's gonna show up now with the Ravagers here, as uh, Hero moving up into the 3-2 upgrades. So that's gonna get picked up and will piss off Zero low on the worker count. Um, he's on five bases already. How are we going to do this droning-wise? Do we just want to get a big round in right now, go up to 82? Or maybe Sarah was confused as to what his position is? I think he might be a little bit confused as to what his position is. I think he should all in right now, honestly. I think if he starts playing against 3-2 upgraded Protoss ground units, while he's working on 2-0 only for Zerglings, he's going to struggle. But right now he has a huge army advantage, so I... I wish he would push his advantage. He was making it very hard for him though, with the Zealot run bys plus the Prism always on his side, so... Cyril is forced to keep a lot of units at home. You need to remember that this didn't start with Oracles, so actually just attacking with Roachling Bane yeah, is so much yeah. easier. Yeah, than usually. Usual. Yeah, the, one of the reasons why usually this style is very good against Ravager Ling Bane is because Hero has five Oracles floating around, which makes a push out impossible unless you s magically manage to bring seven Queens or you have some Hydras in the mix for whatever reason. And it feels like Sero is either forgetting that or he says, hey, actually, I'm kind of fine going into a late game despite being down three upgrades. That's going to be okay for me. He's getting his Vipers, getting Adrenal Glands. Now, Adrenal, of course, is a bit of a game changer against gateway units, so I'm going to give him that. And I, in a way, you can understand that he wants to wait for that. But Hero just keeps expanding as well behind this. Uh, he's going to be kiting back for a long time. Once more, having Oracles here would be invaluable. These are Immortals are being incorrectly rallied and thus are going to fall pretty much for free at the same time the prism goes down as well and if there's ever been a a, a sign from god that it, now it's time to attack then this is it because holy crap Serral just has the perfect setup he just needs to get all of his units here uh, perhaps wait for adrenal glands to finish up more of 20 25 banelings and then you just win the game no yeah i think he has to go now as i said this feels more all in than than it, than it might appear uh, on first glance, there is no stack defense here. The one shoot battery is going to come into play from the initial third base at the gold base. He should really overcharge that. He has a nice concave there with the stalkers as well. It feels very difficult for Sarah to uh, to find a good trade here, even though he's so far up in supply. The overcharge now gets activated. Good abduct there on the immortal. Uh, I'm not sure he can push through here, but that trade definitely was good for him overall. Yeah, it feels uh, feels like an interesting game. Plus two about to finish up. 
10 more roaches, 12 more links. Would you mind if Serral goes for a, a different angle here, or do you think this is the angle to take? It probably is the angle to take, because there is no strict defense here, right? And this is the most open he's going to find. I, a bailing run by three gold, I think, at the same time, would mm. be pretty big. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Floating a little bit of cash, and has been floating for quite a while. Doesn't Either doesn't quite have his larva in order, despite having six bases, or maybe waiting for something. Okay, going to get 34 banes here. As well as six dropper lords. Yeah, that's why right. there has to be like a roach link drop and then baiting run by plus maybe attack at the fifth. Because you can't re you can't really drop banings. Like this is not a very high uh, damage output army. It's it's not a great army to drop. Like if you want to go for mass drops, usually it's some sort of hydras or lurker drop, which is not the case here at all. Hero got completely outpositioned here. His entire army went to walk towards the natural. So Serral is just going to get a free snipe on the gold base. I don't think Hero can really punish this. At the same time, he's going to get a lot of workers. Didn't decide to commit on the Nexus there, which I think is very questionable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Oh, that link is also a little bit questionable, though. Um, it's going to partially escape as these links are now surrounding 5-6 stalkers. Failing's not going to connect to that. This base really should end up falling. I don't think there's any reason not to. Such a hard position to defend for the Protoss because the defensive rotation is so bad there. Uh, Archon's now going down as we see a lot of Banelings being moved commanded in. 64 more links instantly start. So it seems like Serral now in a commanding lead here in this game is continuing to upgrade as well. Has not decided on a later tech. It's not adding a, an Ultra Cavern or a Spire. I, honestly, at this point, I don't think an Ultra Cavern would necessarily be a bad call. I think a Spire is not the ideal play. I feel like that might slow the game down too, too much. Well, if there's not a high Immortal count, Ultras can just be game-ending. As we're going to see this uh, 5 Overlord drop heading in towards the main base, there's nothing to defend. If you can take out those upgrades, that would be really nice because they're far along and that could be somewhat impactful. Stalker's trying to head back in. Don't forget, these are links with plus 2 and Adrenal. Uh, but these Stalkers also are fairly well upgraded. Upgrades are most likely going to finish and Hero's actually going to clean this up without too much trouble. I yeah, I think the the ideal play here from Serra is to just mass banings, get as many banings as possible, and then run into the fresh bases of Hero. Try to deny those. Like, this Nexus has already lost most of its shield points, but uh, this one War Prism is annoying Serra a lot. He is leaving a lot of supply at home for it, I think a little bit too much even. Maybe that's so what maybe the Spire can, is for. Yeah, maybe we can get a Muta there. Yeah. But, uh, like, every single extra minute that Hero survives is really good for him. Even though Serra is building a bank, I think if Hero is maxed out, he can actually trade super effectively and come back into this. Like, this game is not over yet. 20 more Banes on the way. As uh, Hero is resetting up his gold base. Hero with fairly high supply at this point, but his supply is pretty low quality. It's just pure Stalker. And pure Stalker is okay if you can be, you know, moving back. You can be kiting back the entire way, but it might be difficult. Archon Immortal might force you to stay in a more static position here, otherwise the Immortals get left behind. Yeah, this is this is one of these things that can happen if you move with your entire army on the map. Banelings now going to commit into this fight. Let's see how Serral is going to do as he tries to take out that super battery. It's very important. Banelings aiming for some of these probes as well. Uh, lots of units going down on Serral's side, but he has a very, very big bank, and he instantly remaxed behind this as well. Two Corruptors are being produced to deal with that annoying prism that is still hanging in the dead space. 77 workers to 65. Hero just doesn't have the bank available to remax. I... I still... I... What, what is the reason for not getting a cavern here? I, I, I don't quite understand that, Lambo. I mean, I think there's absolutely no need. I think Ultras trade really terribly if they're down in upgrades, which they are, against even, even just against Stalkers. I think just Mass Banings is, is the is player. Okay. Yeah, and, and unless there's Storm, I don't see a reason to go Ultras uh, in any way, shape, or form here. I think Hero's Army is pretty good against it. Uh, you can get the Cavern, though, if you're that rich, for sure. But I would not have I would not have liked seeing them, because they, they, they would be 3-1 Ultras against 3-3-1 three, three, Stalker Immortal Archon, even though it's not a high Immortal count. Yeah, it's like uh, two Immortals. Yeah, I, I still think this is an Ultra and to throw situation, because... Okay, okay. Uh, it's fair. I feel like 
if anything though the cavern would be better to oh well hold a thought as we uh have a little bit of an engagement once again. A minor drop heading towards the main base. Hero quick with the response as he's playing very fast today when it comes to spotting these things and responding to them. Uh, it's definitely on point, it seems like. 180 supply of Archon Stalker. I saw some Templar in the back. I'm not sure. I don't think I've seen Storm being researched, right? Yeah, there's no Storm. Yeah. A Storm in this situation would be game ending. Yeah, it would be huge. I think Cyril is the one that wants to trade now, though. Yeah. It's, it's important for him to not let another base go up. Hero's army is kind of clumped, so this is not the worst fight ever for Cyril. He's very baiting heavy as well. There's not many Zealots coming in here. The three Zealots from the back will do well, though. They will do nicely together with the Immortal that is once again flanking. Singlai Templar also coming here, and... Yeah, I think that trade, once again, it was good enough. Cyril somehow trading evenly, even though he was down in upgrades the entire time. And that's basically because... I think Hero didn't have enough anti baning this entire game, so I think just continuously massing banings is the play here and just denying Hero's expansions because Hero, I'm pretty sure, cannot mine efficiently anymore with the 76 probes. The gold base mines out very fast, you need to remember. So yeah, he needs a new base really, really badly here. If he doesn't ever get a 6 base up, he's just gonna die eventually. Okay, here comes another attack. High baneling count, couple of banings in the far back as well. And Serral's going to be moving in, trying to eat some of these Archons alive. Same time, Lynx hitting the gold base. Prism once again out. Corruptors in the neighborhood, though. But 30 workers going down. Seems somewhat unrecoverable for Hero at this point. These Zealots will need to deal some serious damage. And even then, there's plenty of cash in the bank here for Serral to rebuild his drones. I think he has enough larvae as well as he's uh, set on, what is that, eight hatcheries or so? Mm -hmm. Something along those lines. So, yeah, plenty of larvae, plenty of cash. Hero at 80 supply. I... I keep being surprised by the reluctancy out of a lot of high-level players to research Storm, whether that's going to be in the mid-game or in the late game. But against high baneling scenarios, I don't think there is an, a viable alternative to Storm that, that, that I'm maybe getting like seven Colossus would work. But <laughs> I, I feel like, no, like Storm just seems like a, a, such a huge deal against the army composition that, that Serral is working with. Um, yes, I, I, I definitely. I think there are some other things you can do, but Hero is too far behind to do them. And like, if if you're maxed out on a very high Archon count, if you split your army, it's very good against high bending count, uh, yeah. high bending count armies. Like j just generally having your army split is very good. But he didn't even get maxed out, and then if you're clumped up, yeah, he needs something else, which he didn't get this game. This was an impressive game, though, out of Hero, um, because. The way that I usually see Serral play is that most of the time, if Serral gets ahead in the early game, Serral just doesn't really get in hot weather. Is that what you call it? Yeah, he doesn't get yep. in a he doesn't get in a, in a pickle anymore. But here he was in a pickle, Lambo. It was it was scary multiple times. At some point, there was this this fight just after the two immortals died. Yes, that did yes, not I... go well, and. I was just imagining that fight with the two immortals added in. That fight would not have, you know, it would have gone worse even. And I, 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 yeah. I think that was actually very key, these two immortals, losing them from the back. That was huge because the bailing count there wasn't very high. So immortals actually would have done fantastic because for a long, long time, Sarah was playing on a relatively low bane count, right? It's like maybe 10 or 12 banelings per fight rather than the 40 or 45 we were seeing in the final engagements. Yeah, I love that you said that, because if you didn't, it was exactly the moment of the game that I would have pointed out, I think, with the two Immortals and without the War Prism thing, because that enabled Serral to bring an extra 30 army supply. Like, you need to leave a lot of stuff for a Prism with four Zealots already inside in a dead airspace at home. If he didn't lose the Prism and the two Immortals from behind, I actually would have much preferred Hero Spot, because at that point in the game, he was way up in upgrades as well. Uh, and yeah, I think the fight would have gone... Disastrous with these two immortals alive. Yeah, I think that was pretty much a game changing, the game changing moment there. Yeah, yeah, it felt like. Which is funny because it, I, I guess the early game became pretty irrelevant after Serral's filled baneling bust. It's not like he. I mean, Hero had an impressive defense altogether, but it's also I think says yeah, confusing situations all around. And it felt like for a very long period in that game, Serral was fairly unaware as to where he was in relation to Hero. Didn't quite understand what he was up against. Some, some slight overbuilding of links. 
Um, and I think this is one of those things that that Hero just does very well. Is he has a, this wide variety of builds that he can execute and kind of s seamlessly transition out of as well. Uh, he's just an interesting guy. All right. Next game over here. So we see uh, Cero up 1-0. And Hero here in the top left of Golden Aura. First map pick, of course, went to Cero. Picked Equilibrium. Don't forget that we're kind of expecting that first map to go to the Zerg, right? Equilibrium is the number one veto every single time out of Protoss. Now, this is a best of nine. That means there are no vetoes. So we're going to see Equilibrium. Um, and then Hero decides that he wants to play Golden Aura as his first map. So, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, this is... Technically, this should be a kind of a 1-1 one -one type of situation. Yeah, usually the first map veto from Zerg is actually Raptor said and not Golden Aura, but Golden Aura also is really bad. Yeah. Um, I would say Equilibrium is maybe a little bit more broken than Golden Aura is broken for Toss, just because of that gold base. But in, in general, yeah, it uh, it tends to go this way. Serial opening up with 50 edge this time around. Here we're going for a no scout. Hero abusing a lot of no scout because he, he is basically playing with a theme of the guy that always blocks. And then his opponents try to have a more comfortable early game, trying to get their natural down on location. And because of it, going for a 15 hatch. And Hero very often blank out during that. But yeah, I also like that you said that because when he, I play against Hero, I think exactly that. It's very difficult to know exactly what state the game is in. And how, if, if you're ahead, if you're behind any of that, what even is the possible unit count? Because usually. There's very standard build orders, and you, I know exactly at which time the Protoss can have X amount of units, at which time I can have X amount of drones, and then if I get these drones, if I don't make any mistakes, if I'm ahead or behind, depending yeah. on how the game went. Against Hero, it's super difficult to say because a lot of his builds are freestyle. Like, I am very convinced that he, he might have like tried this once or twice in a custom game, but very... After the very, very start, I think he freestyles a lot. He just gets two forges up, sometimes warps in a random amount of units if he thinks he can do something with them. And it's very difficult on the Zerg side to know exactly where you're at in the game. Yeah, he seems like a very intuitive player. Um, yeah. When, when it comes to build orders and just how, how they come out. Of course, he has very good understanding of how, you know, how, how mineral and gas ratios interact with one another. Although sometimes he does get that wrong as well. Where we'll see him floating a, a couple of hundred gas for no apparent reason. I think one or two days ago when we were casting, we had a game where he was floating 900 gas. We were wondering why he didn't have a Templar Archives. And then at some point he started wondering as well and he threw down the Templar Archives. <laughs> <laughs> Another cool little innovation or a cool little thing that Hero has been doing a lot are those uh, these alternative walls with the pylon, uh, gate, cyber. Now they aren't the most secure walls i'm pretty certain that with links you can push past but hero generally has very good single adept scouting he often commits with the first adept gathering uh, a lot of information like we're seeing now yes he's also dealing damage he's actually dealing a fair amount of damage he's gonna get two kills with a single adept that is not great um, but he also just gets a lot of information and uh, if you want to wall like this you're gonna need to gather a lot of information otherwise you might just end up dying for free and then we've seen this follow up either with a second gate but also a lot of just nexus before second gate and usually that isn't entirely viable because then you're just going to get link flooded at some point and you'll die but hero uh, has been trying it quite a bit it's not going to be the case this time we see void ray into oracle as the void ray starts looking for overlord it found one already and it's gonna try and get a second i doubt he's gonna find it against a player like Cyril. yeah Cyril being very cautious Obviously, Serial also had a lot of games to study from because Hero played Rainer twice. He played Solar and Dark, right? Yeah. And two of those were, no, three of those were best of seven, I think. One of those best of five because he lost the initial one in the upper bracket. So uh, uh, there's basically a lot of information out there on how Hero likes to play. He used to open with uh, Void Race a bunch, first or second unit. So yep. Serial is playing it very safe. He's committing here on top of the Queen. Ooh. We'll get it for a little bit of HP damage on both units. I think well worth it for the Protoss, as he's now also moving in with double adapt towards the third base. I would be very surprised to see no Zerglings. Yeah, but there's no speed yet. I think they just got spotted, the fact that there's no speed. Probably want to walk yep. away from the Queens and finish this Shade. Uh, not That's a, a huge finish. fan of where that Shade went. I think finishing that Shade would have been fine, but I would have preferred it in towards the main ramp, because you know there's not going to be a Queen there anymore. 
then you can just kite the zerglings for a little bit because the zergling count was quite low i feel like this had higher potential it's still you know it got a little bit of damage done but felt like there was there was more here to be uh yeah. to be done for sure a another thing um I can never mind. I can't remember. I remember <laughs> I had an important thing. Oh, right. I felt like um, the focus fire there with the spore wasn't uh, well executed by Serral during that little engagement. He switched m like midway through from the Oracle to the Void Ray, which felt like a mistake. Always feels like attacking the Oracle is much more important because you see it more in an aggressive manner after anyway. Void Rays often just return back home. So now this Void Ray has a bit of yellow HP, but I don't think that's going to be very impactful for the game. Well. If you can damage more of the real HP of the Oracle, and always feels like that's quite nice. Double Robo mm -hmm. here and charge. Have we seen this particular uh, setup before out of Hero? I don't think so, right? Not that I am aware, no. This is a much... Uh, he basically is trying to make this look like his 8 gate. He's trying to play with that. And he's just trying to pressure a little bit, forcing out some roaches, but... I mean, Serral already is at 66 workers, so this is not really an issue for him. Yeah. As long as he doesn't lose that base, might actually force a cancel here. The Roaches don't have high enough DPS to kill these Zealots before the hatch will be cancelled. And Serral, in response, starting a spy, which should be really good against a guy that's messing Zealots and Immortals. Yeah, that's actually kind of sad that Hero here forces, accidentally forces a spy here out of Serral, which is something that probably counters what he's currently playing although he's gonna add a second forge and he's getting blink as well so it's not like he's going into immortal charge from here on out could we by the way make sure that we're kind of lined up what's your timing in game yeah I, i'm 6 40 now i okay. paused 38 people were complaining. 39 yeah. 40 41 gotcha yeah okay a couple of pilots going down for here as well as a fourth base fourth base is pretty quick here honestly was this off of four gates, or well, do you know what the gate count is? I the initial attack, I I assume was four, and I'm yeah. not sure he added more. I I guess it's at least two more because he walled off his uh, third uh, base, yeah. right? So it's six probably now. Six, yeah, yeah. I, li I like this setup quite a bit. Uh, really needs to try and get some info on what his opponent is doing. It's not like Sarah is floating 1500 gas, so it's not going to be 15 mutas, but still. Uh, 9 or 10 mutas going unscouted can be quite frustrating. Hero's going to be setting up for a, a, a similar wall-off pattern as he did against Raynor on this map. And these uh, mutas are now popping out. I'd be extremely afraid if I was Sero here, popping out yeah. these mutas. In case it's like a second double Stargate fleet beacon again, you know? Yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah, But he probably knows, like if Hero does something once on a map, the chance of him doing it the exact same thing again is extremely low. Usually it will always be something that looks similar and then is completely different. So Did he catch that? I am not sure he said him, yeah. Okay. okay, didn't hit a revelation at least on the... I thought he might have caught one of these mutas in the revelation. Yeah, it's possible. But, but no stack defense going down, so he didn't. Yeah. Stalker's also not moving towards the left side, which would be the natural location to move your stalkers to. Voidray is not going to get the early spot. This is not committed Mutalisk play, though. So, can technically just warp in 9, 10 Stalkers. He probably has a couple already, 4 or 5, and then should be able to deal with this. But still, losing 10 workers here, or however many he's going to lose, is actually going to be super frustrating. Yeah, Hero's going to be losing quite a few workers, and with that, a, a bit of momentum as well. Yeah, he's not paying attention to the Zealots either, so he will lose his run by for basically free. They're not even fighting the Zealots, trying to run away. From the Zerglings loses 15 probes. Also, Phoenix production is forced, and he didn't kill many of them. He just said, ah, no, now he's gonna get a bunch. That was maybe not the best commitment there from Serral, who will end up losing most of his mutas. I feel like this was really good, though, for Serral. Hero also a bit slow with worker reproduction. 16 probes. I, I mean, this is just not very nice. The one good thing is that he already was mining from 8 gas, and it often feels like um, that, oh, well, he's actually not mining. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, th I just saw the eight gases. I was like, guys, oh, probably mine, but he wasn't. He wasn't mining from two of those bases. That's super sucks. Because otherwise, you don't have as much money, but at least you can morph in Archons or you can get Stormers out. And that is something as well. As uh, the Temple Archives is now on the way. Uh, there's no way Serral's actually going to commit. He's just opening this up as a future run by path, right? He's not actually thinking of attacking into this. Is he? It is. I mean, there is no AoE here whatsoever. He's warping in the first Archon now. It might not be the best uh, 
the, the worst idea. We'll, we'll see how it goes. It's an insane bailing amount, but good, really good force fields here from Hero, blocking the bailings for a long amount of period of time here. In the initial fight, the Zealots trying to charge in, waiting for the bailings to die, but there's just so many bailings that they are not dying on time. Now the Nexus is starting to become really, really low, so I think Sarah should focus that on the way out. Traded out most of his army, still gets the Nexus. Good fight for Sarah. I really didn't think that was going to be possible. It is. Uh, it, it was an insane amount of energy. It was like 50 bailings against just Stalker and Mortal. That's true, but I felt like it was so choky. You had the insane static yeah. set up as well. It felt like... Uh, and the force shields were good too there initially, but I guess not having any Archons in front is a little bit painful. Uh, it makes life a bit harder. And Hero now on only 60 probes. I, I, I think it also was really bad for him that he had no Zealots as a run by. And whenever he tries to hide the Zealots, he runs in with them when the Bailings are still there. Like, I, I've seen this many times from Hero. He needs to be more patient with them. The Zealots are just literally useless because the Bailings will die anyways and they're there to tank. So if the Bailings kill the Zealots, it's a nice bonus mm. that Hero just gives him. Like, they, they should be there for the cleanup at the end versus the Road Travager instead of uh, engaging as the Bailings hit. Hero now scouting a fully saturated gold base. And there's absolutely nothing he can do about it, which yeah. must be a very bad feeling. Yeah, Sero is already prepared to, to morph Brute Lords if he feels like the ground army will become too strong. He might even just preemptively morph them because he's getting quite a lot of Corruptors. But what's the chance here that Sero says, hey, your immortal count is too high, it's going to be difficult for you to, to base trade. Maybe I just want to go for an attack. It's so rare to see Brute Lord attacks because it often exposes the Zerg so much. But if there's a very high immortal count, sometimes it feels like it might be viable. It does It does sometimes feel like it, it, it might be viable. I think that puts in a good way and then you do it and you get wiped by just ground. Mm. Uh, I think going Brute Lords against that Valkyries is extremely bad usually for Zerg, but he's so very, very far ahead that he might force the blink forward and then just run in with the Banings and then win the game. I think that's probably what's the most likely outcome here. Because it's still not that many AoE units. There's no Storm here. It's only three icons that I saw. These upgrades are pretty sick though, no? And these Brutes are going to be practically unupgraded. Like... Well, it's it's 2-2 two -two against plus 2 melee, plus 2 missile. It's not the worst. That's force true. Area. Prism on the Yet. map is something I'm a huge fan of personally. Blinks forward here to try and snipe these Brutes. Gets one, but it's going to pay 2-3 Stalkers for it. Maybe not the end of the world. Prism is going to force a bunch of supply at home here. Sarah indeed moves forward, has the Overlord's pooping creep, making sure that he can transfuse these brutes. Big blink forward, Banelings will trigger into these stalkers, but the brutes largely go down. The Baneling count is, well, diminishing here as well. Supplies well, going down very quickly here for uh, Hero. Not sure if he has the ability to reproduce quickly into this. Has a couple more stalkers now, trying to come in with a flank. If you don't get a proper cleanup here, that's very frustrating because the reproduction ability of Sero is much higher than that of Heroes. So ideally he would have completely cleaned up the, the Brute count and maybe even some of these Queens. Having that Prism still around though is huge and Sero definitely needs to route his Corruptors into that direction before trying to morph more Brute Lords here. Storm is on the way as well, which is something I personally like a lot. 3-3 getting closer to finishing up, as this Prism is gonna go in. Oh, there's still Banelings there, and Sero is well prepared. He always is. He always is. He is in position. I think that fight would have been good in an even game, but it's a game where Sero is very far ahead, so he has the ability to remax. He's gonna try to go again with the Brute Birds. As long as he hits before Storm, I like that, but 3-3 is gonna be done. If Storm is done, if Hero's on top of Chrono boosting it, I, I'm pretty sure he can buy time because these Brute Lords, Serral did not have the balls to morph them straight in Hero's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they will still need to get across the map as well. Which should buy enough time for Storm to finish. And then the engagement can become very, very messy, very f fast for the Zerg because you can blink forward and then zone the Banelings with the Storm. And then when the Banelings go forward, you just run with the Stalkers while storming. And the Brute Lords, they don't kill enough Stalkers if the Stalkers are highly upgraded in order to make this a favorable engagement for Zerg usually. I don't know why Hero is fighting into him because he's not next yet, but he's Ooh. storm dropping. A lot of Banings actually go down before the fight. Also saves most of his Stalkers. So this is a good initial two storms for a Hero, who's still not entirely maxed out. He's once again loading up two more High Templars, blinking forward, killing a couple of Brute Lords, zoning out 
the Banings with the Storms, but I think he was a little bit too trigger happy with the last couple of Storms. He's blinking forward, a lot of Banings are still left over. I think Hero a little bit surprised by the amount of Banings that were still on the field, and now he's just running. A lot of his units are getting stuck, dying to Broodlings and Zerglings. I don't think that was quite the engagement that Hero needed. No, I, he indeed seemed a little bit shocked by the amount of Banelings still there being hidden in the far back. And once those got sent in, that was fairly frustrating there for him. Yeah, that, that one storm on the Broodlord felt like a, a victory storm, if anything. It's like, oh, I killed all your Banes, let me throw one on the Broods here. And I think there were still about 35 Banes remaining, which would have obviously been much better to storm. And now Serral's going to be pushing forward as this Broodlord aggression is going to succeed. And he takes game number two here as well. And that is actually a problem for Hero, because this was his map. Um, and in the best of nine, your map should be somewhat pretty favorable for you. We still have Rod Husset coming up. Serral is the one who picked that. Is it actually? Or is it ABBAABB? -A -A oh, I, I don't... I mean... Heartlet next. Yeah, but it's going to be impossible uh, to read. I, I don't know the system. Yeah. It would be I, a wild I, I, move. I, I would say it's probably Serral and Hero Hero and then Hardlet Alkione. Sounds like Serral picks. And yeah. Oceanborn Hecate are Protoss picks. Solaris I did the last leftover. Yeah, that would maybe make, make more sense. Either way, we're going to get Rod Husset, which this, <laughs> if if Hero doesn't win Rod Husset, we're in 5-0 territory. That is true. Because then you get Hardlet Elcioni, although I feel like Hero's performance on Hardlet is actually very good. And before we've mentioned it being a disguised Sleeper Protoss map. Um, so it's not it's not like we look at Hardlet and think to ourselves, wow, this map's impossible to win for Toss. I actually think it's pretty okay to win for Toss. I feel the same about Elcioni in a way, but there I feel like I'm standing very alone. Um, well, I think, I think I look... At none of the maps, and I think they're impossible for Protoss to win, aside from Equilibrium, which we're already out, right? I don't think there's any massively Zerg favorite maps. Personally, uh, I'm not a huge Oceanborn fan. Yeah, but I think you're... I actually I actually also like Oceanborn for Zerg, but I've seen Protoss players even lose respect this in WTL, so I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, not sure it's the most common. <laughs> yeah. Usually the second veto is Solaris, and even that I think is a good hero map. The second yeah. veto from Protoss usually yeah. is Solaris. Yeah, he, he wins quite a bit on Solaris. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely true. It's going to be interesting to see. It's also fun that I feel like before this tournament, there wasn't so much four gas play anymore. And Hero is really kind of bringing it back here in the PvZ matchup. And he's performing extremely well with it. Just a lot of Stalkers, good upgrades, a lot of Zealots. It felt... At least to me, it felt like it had been kind of figured out by the Zergs on, on how to how to deal with it. Um, with like just high baneling counts, uh, some tight timings, but uh, a lot of Zergs have been struggling with it, and Hero's been performing well with it. Let's see what's going to happen here on Rod Husset Station, a map that we never really see in tournaments, unless you're hitting the best of seven, best of nine stage. And even then, sometimes we don't see it because it gets picked so late. That the series will be over before then. Mm -hmm. Do you know he where this is from? Rat who said it sounds Scandinavian. It's a it's a Swedish um, metro station, subway station. Okay. It's considered one of the prettiest subway stations in the world. <laughs> it I I looked at pictures and it looked quite nice. It's like sandy textures. It looks like you're somewhere else. That's not Sweden, which I probably your Swedish people like it. They secretly <laughs> all want to leave as well. Swedish, <laughs> Swedish the, the Swedes are the Belgians of Scandinavia as well, I always feel like. You know, not really respected amongst their peers. Like an outsider might look at Sweden and think, oh, that's a cool country. But then when you're in the Scandinavian group, it's like, eh. yeah, it's <laughs> like, yeah. It's a little bit Belgium, you know. <laughs> it's like a Spanish person might look at Belgium. It's like, oh, they got the beer, they got the chocolate. They ask a Dutch person or someone from Luxembourg or Germany, like Belgium, really? You know, part of them speak French. <laughs> and like the Spanish guy goes, oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so I have these interactions commonly. <laughs> so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there a Dutch? Uh, it's it's different from yours, right? Or it's a different accent, I guess. Oh, they, well, 
they say it's an accent. I believe it's a completely different language. You can't understand okay. them. Nah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they try to speak that. They do their best, you know? It's like when a little kid comes home with a painting and they're five and they've never painted before. You know, you put it on the fridge and you go, good job, little man. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all the grown-ups know that it's nothing like real painting. Hey, you're not going to put this up in a museum. It's the same with the Belgian language. It's... It's, it's like they're literally speaking Dutch for the first time in their life. It's not similar at all. Yeah. I, I think, by the way, we're going to see a Ling drop boost. Is my Ooh. prediction here. Because he went gas pull hatch. <clears throat> and he's, he's going for a quick lair. We'll see if he pulls out of gas. This might be... Could also be a quick Nidus. Yeah. It's, it, it's very easy to get a Nidus up here. Because it's difficult to cover the in, in base as well as your entire main. The main is pretty big. So... This Oh, sorry. This Lingram buy could be huge. We're going to have to wait and see what Hero's going to do with his Adept. But yeah, he's going to at least force the second one at home. And you ideally want to keep your opponent somewhat busy. More Lings moving across the map. Ooh, this Adept is going to get the scout in. He's going to try and go towards the main base. If he doesn't finish that, Hero's in trouble. Okay, he yeah. finishes it, sees the lack of a third base. This should be a recall and a full wall right away. Full wall 100%. plus recall. Yeah. 100%. I mean, it's so fishy. His Adept was was running across the map, and he already saw Lynx further than his Adept. So it's, <laughs> it very much so looks just like a Lynx flood. And yeah, I think Surge, he needs an Overlord drop, right? Yeah, yeah, he needs it. If he doesn't have an Overlord drop, there's no way this is working. He's going to get a Nidus network and a Dropper Lord as well at the same time. I'd almost prefer as a second unit a Void Ray here for the consistent damage output very often against Lynx floods. No, please don't send this across the map. Hero! What? No, we can't actually do this, can we? We're not building batteries either. This is insanity. He is not respecting Saril's ability to cheese at all. Yeah, he scouts it. Now he's like, oh, whoa, 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 no drones. That's an issue. It's going to add another battery in here. He needs to start a void. Like, if, yeah, a void here is 100% the correct call, but he just doesn't have anything to do with it. Dropper Lord entering in the third, Dropper Lord entering in the main, but it's hiding it so he can get the Nidus network up as well. Link's moving back home so they can use the Nidus to get transferred in towards the main. What's the queen count? Because that's going to be somewhat important. One? Two? It's it's two, I think. I would get be surprised to see here? a third one. I am so surprised that there is uh, no battery in the main base. He's fighting with the probes against all the Zerglings right now. He, he thinks it's now or never. I feel like... He could have just kited to the natural and let the Orcus do their thing. He still is ahead in workers. He's winning. Sarah very indecisive with the Zerglings, by the way. He tried to snipe the pylon, now he realized he can't. Now he's trying to go for the Adept. The Void survives, <clears throat> the two Orcus survive. And with that, I think I think he has had because it should be impossible for Sarah to get back into the hero's base. I'm, I think he accidentally rattied links to the other side of the map rather than the Nidus. There were like 16 links just standing on the low ground waiting. And look how many possible. links there. Ah, this is not good. I, I think this build relies heavily on the adept not scouting anything. Yeah. Because if Hero actually read this the way he was supposed to, and there's a battery in the main, this is not even close. Like, not, not even mm. remotely close. And there should always be a battery in the main and one in the natural, right? Yeah. I, I think one of the problems for Hero here was that he, um, he didn't have a pylon near the Nexus. Right? So yeah. he w would have needed to build a pylon and then another battery. Because getting a well, battery at the, at the Stargate would have seemed a little bit silly. No, it's so far back, you're not really defending much. I guess it's still better than nothing. I, but. You, you should have it there for sure. I, I think even then, if it's close enough to Nexus, you can always pull your probes here. It's, it's still... But yeah, he, he made the extra pylon now. He's reinforcing his Stargate with two extra pylons, actually. Um, so you're trying to... This will be round two at some point, right? You, there's no way ever you're going to muck out of this. Hmm. I still feel like if these 16 extra links would have been in the Nidus, like that is a pretty serious amount of extra links that would have been there. Yes. He would have destroyed the fight probably on the ground. Yeah. He, he always would have lost his queens to the air units, but uh, the Oryctus will run out of energy and the one Void Ray can only do so much. I don't quite know that he would have uh, broken him on the natural though. I think that's... Yeah. It, there were two batteries in the net already. So unless you yeah. clear all the adapts. Because the moment any Adept stays alive, your Lynx just die really fast. The consistent output of the Adept against the Lynx is actually quite powerful. Um, 
And then you still have a super battery you can activate as well to make your probes fight. So there's just a very long period of time you need to bridge with a Void Ray and a Depths out. Just going to lose a lot of links. Serral's going to try again. Uh, this should never work. Hero is just in a phenomenal spot. I like that he continues Oracle production for two reasons. One, for safety reasons, and two, for aggressive reasons. I think it's going to be useful later on in the game as well. And it's just making sure that he can always survive. Like, there's no way he's dying to pure Ling. I, I, there's just no viable transition here out of this for Serral. Doesn't have a third base yet. Doesn't have a big army. Doesn't have any type of extra tech. Hero going into Fleet Beacon second Stargate. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I also don't think I care enough. <laughs> yeah. I think he, he's free to do whatever, really. Yeah. Everything except Colossus. <laughs> I don't want to see Colossus. That would hurt me. Because oh, good work. I mean, if he loses all Oracles here somehow, I cannot believe he's engaged in this. Yeah, that seemed, that seemed like a wild play. Those were seven queens, I think, or six queens, and he had five oracles, and there was a transfuse available. That was a very non-optimal play. He's still so far ahead that I don't really care enough. <laughs> um, but care. a couple more moves like this, and maybe I will start caring. Still wins, don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I started going for 35 drone Hydra while we're having two carries on the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the thing is, though? Imagine, because these two carriers, they're not going to win the game, right? We know this already. Like, there are seven queens out. He's going to have at least one spore. Carriers with plus one are pretty good, but they shouldn't be capable of winning the game. Correct? Yes. If then Serral builds a lot of drones, <laughs> no. and at some point he gets to the Lurker and the Infester, now... There is this combination that's the microbial shroud ability on the lurker lambo this makes air units deal a crap i think it's 50 percent right a 50 percent damage reduction now that is a crazy spell similar to the dark cloud of brood war some people say it's even better um don't know who these people are but i've heard <laughs> yeah, <it who>? before. <laughs> never <laughs> never in my life have i heard anyone say this <laughs> You know, and uh, boom, bop, all of a sudden we have ourselves a macro game. And then I'm not so sure if I favor hero in a macro game. Yeah, that, that made about zero sense. So let me tell you what's going to happen. He's going to make six carriers run across the map and kill him. Even just if the carriers were AFK, he would still beat him on the ground. Uh, Xero is trying his best to do what you said. He's trying to get up drones, still down on workers. By the time hero is going to be maxed, Sarah will be at 150 supply, maybe. Here probably he's going to attack even earlier. And, uh, yeah. I'm loving the, the spirit, though, that Sarah has. I'm also not entirely sure why Hero is taking out the back door here. He's probably thinking of expanding to the gold. Um, I would prefer if he didn't do that. It's but first die points at this point. I still maybe don't he care there's extra money on the line. He got a lot of money for taking two gold bases, didn't he? Who? A hero got like 10k on the gamer's aid for <laughs> going true. double gold, so maybe he's trying to do it again. Yeah, that's possible. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna get that Nidus here on the gold. As he starts his plus two as well. Now, what I'm curious about is how quickly is Serral going to rush that Microbial Shroud? How important does he believe it is? Because I think this is this is vital for his survival. If you can get six investors out, just six, we don't need more than six. Cast a couple of microbial shrouds on his hydras with double upgrades, by the way. So they're already not taking that much damage and they're dealing quite some damage. You said 150 supply when hero maxes out. I already see Serral climbing up to the, the basically the 120s here. Hero barely at 146, Hero gonna lose another Oracle. We get Neural Parasite. Another scenario, let me sketch it for you, Lambo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hero, in his uh, limitless love for taking bad trades with his Oracles, loses his Oracles to the Queens, mm -hmm. flies onto the map with the 
8 to 10 carriers and gets half of them neuroparasited without the ability to spot anything that's under the ground, burrowed. Now, not many people are aware of this, but in order to spot a burrowed unit, you require detection. And without oracles and observers, observers can be sniped, oracles, if they're not there, can't revelate, all of a sudden, you lose half of your army to the opponent. The neuroparasite takes it over, and the carriers will fight alongside the Zerg. But carriers are bugged, so they don't do anything for us. This is... That's the only, uh, that's well, the only uh, hole well, in your uh, entire Well, plan. is this really a bug? So... Yeah, of course it's a bug. No, it, well, I... It's only with a carrier. Uh, so maybe the other units are bugged. In my mind, <laughs> what happens with the carrier <laughs> here <laughs> is the most logical explanation. For the people who are not aware, the carrier, when it gets taken over by Neural Parasite, does not get the upgrades that the Protoss has researched for the carrier. But that makes sense to me because the Zerg hasn't researched those upgrades for the carrier. The carrier now fights alongside the opponent. Why would it be using those upgrades? Now, if the Zerg player were to just take a probe and build a Nexus, then get a cybernetics core out and start upgrading and then take them over, they would have those upgrades. So this is once again Zerg's complaining about a completely fixable problem. <laughs> okay, let's 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 talk about it in a logical way, right? You upgrade the weapons, the laser beams of the carrier. Now you lose your cyber core. Okay. Your upgrades are still still there for the carriers, right? Sure. The carriers don't lose their upgrades. Yeah. So now if we just Okay, take but that's because over the, the mind knowledge of the, the knowledge guy. is there on the proto side. Now in yeah, the, the neural parasite no one there. knows what happens during the neural parasite process. Maybe the weapons fall off and then the, the knowledge on the Zerg side off. isn't there. You have these dumb queens looking at oh, I don't know what to do. Let's just use it in the default state. I think that is what happens. Lore wise makes more sense as well. Neural parasite is an intrusive process. Well they they take over the the guy who drives the, the ship, no? They, they must be they must be taking over the guys that that, uh, that but the that, arm that just goes into the sh it, it 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 seems to touch the ship I, i'm not even sure if there's a guy inside of the carrier i think these are computer uh computer uh what you call it control so the investors are just glorified hackers is what you say <laughs> they're just glorified <laughs> hackers <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Hero didn't just get him, by the way. I actually can't believe it. Hero, out of all people, is fucking sitting here turtling. Well, he was 50 workers, but he's just 30. Yeah, this is not great. <clears throat> this guy, he's gonna aim move now. Man, there's Ultras out on the map. There's no Immortals. But we have a couple of disruptors. Is the only anti-air that Serral has right now these hydras? Yeah, but there's um, microbial shrouded queens mostly. I think the queens. Queens. I think he's gonna try to microbial shroud the queens so the carriers are occupied, and then he's gonna try to neural the carriers. Yeah, the, the problem is that neural versus disruptors actually really sucks because that's true. Where but the arm comes out of the ground, you just shoot the purification nova, and usually there's more investors around as well. Ooh, did he tag those? I think he barely missed the investors. He did. Yeah, I mean, Saren needs the Ultras to do wonders. He needs the Ultras to zone out the Disruptors. There are zero Immortals. And Hero is just letting him build all the Ultras. Did Hero think this was a closer game than it actually was? He must have, right? Yeah, I think so. He completely misread this. I, maybe respecting Saren too much, but Saren was giga at that. I was very surprised Saren didn't leave the game, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and now, it's an actual... Like, don't get me wrong, I, I think if Hero just engages normally, he's gonna crush the fight. He, he, needs, he needs a revelation on the investors, preferably before the fight happens. If you get that, I think you insta-go. But at the same time, you maybe just want to get a couple of Immortals now, and then... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like he has slightly too many carriers as well. Yeah, we, I mean, the, I, in my mind, he just crushes the fight anyways. But we will see. We will see how it goes. What if he never fights? I mean, then you're, he's playing a late game against Serra. That's not a good spot to be in, guys. That Unless is you're Rainer's off race. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah on Rad Husset especially. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here come the Purification. It's going to hit a lot of queens there instantly. That's a good start of the fight. We're still going to need that uh, revelation on those investors. There we get it. That's very big. Now I think you send it. Like, legit, you just send it. 
you have Templar. Does he even have Storm? I think he does, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he has it all. He has, uh, this is this is legit the peak army. This is as good as it's going to get. If we're not going now, then we're never going. He's going to add a couple more Immortals behind this as well, which will rally to the army. His upgrades are very good. I mean, this is... He's going to try and cancel a base. <laughs> He's playing too yeah. slow. He's playing this with F2, this army. High Templar Disruptor Orica is all moving with the same... Pretty sick. That's he must tab. Cool. He must tab, right? In order yeah, to access he must tab. He's the, a tabber. The disruptors. Or is disruptor higher than I Templar? I actually don't know. I never put them on the same hotkey. It's I think it's high Templar is higher. This is still good for Hero. He still has oh, yes. the revelation on the investors, takes out two bases. I mean, these were nice moves. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with this move, except for the fact that he could have won the game a long time ago. And that every his second army is goes... way better, right? His Sorry? Army is way better. His army is still way better. Yeah. Like, we're, yeah, yeah. we're talking about... Necessarily trying to get plus one crafters out right now. <laughs> Against plus three carriers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good luck with that fight, buddy. <laughs> We're gonna get two vipers out here. I mean, his entire is still Hydras, um, which is a unit you don't really want to have in the late game comps. <clears throat> Surprised we're not seeing a second Spire, by the way. Or maybe it's there, but he just isn't upgrading from it. Either way, that feels like a mistake in that case. Plus two armor now on the way. Hiro is still controlling the mining of his opponent quite well. And at the same time, he's only on five bases himself. It's not like he's giga out mining here. Um, can we get a Templar feedback on those Vipers? That also would be big. Storms would be big. Purification of us could be big. Ooh, Serol felt like he wasn't really paying attention to the army for a second there. Disruptor is going to hit some of these Ultras. Gold base is the next objective here for a hero. Then potentially could take down these rocks and do something here. We'd still need to mine out these minerals somehow. As uh, every second that goes by is a second in which this game is just uh, slowly walking into the direction of Saro. And of crawling maybe more. Because it's a very, very slow pace. If he ever finds a, a way to get rid of these Hydras and gets to Tutu Corruptor Viper... I mean, we almost have an actual army at this point. No? We're lacking we do, spores, yeah. but... If the Hydras are gone, this is just a late-game army. I think he needs to kill the Hydras. Like, I, I think he's afraid that the moment he kills the Hydras and he has some yeah. production hero goes. But, but whenever there's no revelation, I think he should do it. Yeah. Not even run them by, because the moment you run by, it's go time. Yeah. Zerg units, the ones he wants to replace them with, actually take quite a while to, to bid. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, he's just hoping for a miracle fight, basically. Oh, here we go. Investors moving forward. Two are going to get caught by that disruptor. Couple of storms going down as well. Parasitic bombs are big here. More storms raining down from the sky. Neural Parasite hitting microbial shrouds covering the four hydras that remain. And Serol actually wins the fight. Yeah, kind of. It was probably not good enough. Yeah. Stalker Warp been very far away. I think he tapped to the wrong base there. That should have definitely been at the gold base. Yeah. Um, Serol instantly remaxing. It's good that he was making Immortals. Reading into the situation that there are Ultras coming. And he still saved some of the carriers. I still think this is very good for a hero, but it, this is the least hero like game I have ever seen in my entire life. And it's hero playing it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this wouldn't be a surprise if we saw uh, Christianer playing. That it's an unhero like game, but yeah, this is the guy himself. <laughs> I think Chris Jenner playing like this would also be a very would also surprise. be a bigger surprise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe good. even bigger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's no Archon drop in this game. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna have a Nexus go up on the bottom right. Uh, Serol's gonna try to cancel it. Still has a couple of Hydras in there. You saw that Microbial Shroud doing some serious work though in that last fight. <laughs> Keeping those four Hydras alive till the very end. Uh, investor count feels very low. Um, I feel like Hero... They, they, I thought there were four Immortals on the way, but they're not here in this fight right now, so they must still be walking across the map somehow, some way. Corruptor's gonna jump on this army as... Uh, Serol feels like he's winning this fight kind of once more. Now stuck with a lot of Corruptors, though, which is kind of uncomfortable. There was no blink. I didn't even realize that. Zealot run by hitting this base. I think Serol has just died. Yeah, yeah. 
I think Sarah really did uh, did his best though. He's gonna peep this army as well. <laughs> He's running here without blink. I, how did he not realize he didn't have blink when he warped in 30 stalkers? I think he started basically army. instantly, but he just wanted to keep keep going. I think Hero is deadly afraid of accidentally ending up in a proper late game now. I mean, the fear I think is setting in a bit late. If you're if you're maxed out on ground, you should say just win this game. Sarah is out of bases as well, out of fresh yeah. bases that he can mine from. Does Sarah even have a Greater Spire? Uh, I, th I know he researched upgrades consistently. I'm not even sure he morphed a Greater Spire yet. Because Sarah needs these Corruptors to be morphed into Brute Lords. Otherwise, he's just dead. Yeah. He's going to take out a base, which is nice. This hero actually doesn't have that much mining either right now. I mean, that gold is going to be pretty empty, I assume. The bottom right side base is... Is well long distance mining. Right now, Serral's actually out mining his opponent. Neither player capable of maxing. Still feels like Hero's army should be significantly better due to the fact that uh, a lot of Serral's army supply is made up out of these corruptors. Four Archons being morphed. I think uh, Templar here are going to be very good, very powerful. I think this army is just too big, Lambo. Like the Immortal Count is good. Okay, there's going to be Brutes. And I think Hero is going to hit just before the Brutes finish. So one more base will fall here for Serral. There shouldn't be anything he can do about that. He is being very indecisive. I don't think he saw the Brute Lords yet, otherwise uh, he he would know that it's go time. Yeah. Brute Lords do finish up, the base goes down. The space is very important for Sarah. Yeah. He's back down to his only original four bases. Hero sees the Brute Lords. He should not engage into this, I think. Yeah, I don't so think so either. Away. I... He, he can uh, just out-expand Sarah now. I think he can... They this is where you're side. supposed to... Yeah, you, you split your army, you kill the gold base. Yeah. You can even kill the rocks at yeah. the... Rocks, it, mine those minerals, and start expanding to the left. The bottom right side base, I think, is bait. Yeah. I, I mean, Serral should not be capable of taking that, but I think Hero shouldn't have... Uh, shouldn't be focusing on that either. It's just not so important for him. It's gonna blink in, has the invisibility. Are there any overseers with this army? I think the answer might actually be no. As... Uh, Serral's gonna wait for the invisibility to kind of, kind of run out here. Continues... Uh, well, kiting back with the Brutes. Blinding Cloud's gonna be used. Fungals as well. Hero losing a lot of supply. Down to 133. He's not actually mining that much. He needs Dude, to be so careful. He's actually this game. He's losing all of his expansions to the to the Zerglings. Now, this gold is already mined out, so this is probably not the most important for <laughs> for Serial to kill. He needs to chill and just expand towards the left side. Honestly. Yeah. Serial has he, a gold. I, I, I'm not sure he can uh, win the fights if he keeps going for direct engagements. This would be a pro of the ages, honestly. I, I know my biggest throw of all time. Sarah is very similar to this. Sarah, uh, 16 bit? Yeah, 16 bit. Sarah started with like 13, 12 that I defended perfectly. And then I also ended up throwing in late game. But I think this one would be even bigger. Because he could have just aim with him at any moment. Okay, he's gonna try to go for a storm drop once more. There's no real ground force, but fungal plus uh, brute lord can be quite good. If you just keep attacking into it, I think this is a moment where you split off a couple of zealots, you shoot the gold, and then you run for your life. That's exactly yes. what he's doing. He's gonna get caught by a couple of fungals, though, and he's not expanding to anything extra, which is actually an issue. He needs bases. He needs probes. He needs bases. Um. Uh, okay, Cyril is not. You know, he, he he's starting to be completely mined out of the bases that he has. Hero really just needs to take a chill pill. There's not even that many ground units. Like, he, he <laughs> just leave a couple of units on the left side and take all of the bases for free. While still being on the map and do the exact same things. I don't know why this mothership is even with the main army. He can use it at the top to recall. Or the and bottom, nothing to take out the bottom do. base if he wants to. Yeah, there's he has complete map control. There's no ground force available for Serral. Serral should not be capable of holding any bases. All that Serral has is 20 links. 20 links can never win in run buys versus one or two Archons. It's not possible. It's not viable. Um, it, 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 Hero should he not be expand. attacking into this. He really shouldn't he, be. He needs to expand. Dude, he's... I am, I am starting to be really afraid that Hero's just gonna run into this and lose. I'm really... I'm really starting to... <laughs> have a bad feeling about this as he's running into... Two Fucking 15 Brutalers, 3 more are morphing, there's a lot of investors that can zone out the Stalkers. The Stalker numbers aren't even that high. And he's just, he just keeps running forward, getting some units fungled, losing a lot of units for free, the Time War blends. 
on the Brutalord. There's more Brutalords here than there are Stalkers. Blinding Cloud lands on top of the Stalkers. He's blinking forward, trying to cloak his units here. What the hell are you doing? Because this is not it. This is just absolutely not it. Yeah, these are some questionable plays here. Hey. It's making Voidris now. Do you need Hon to expand, please? Honestly, Tempest wouldn't be so bad. If you want to play this style yes. of trying to trade, Tempest here would have been the answer. Um, yeah, there's no end. No, there's, there's no anti air. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's no way that yeah you could ever clear the Templar either. Um, so so he's I think that. I think Saros actually made the con. This is the. This is probably one of the sickest comebacks I've seen. Because this game was over for a solid 16, 17 I mean, we, we were constantly joking just because of how boring it would have been to cast this game. Because of yeah. how over it was. Hey, and also nothing happened. So, it's not... Yeah. You know, it, we, they just sat there for 15 minutes. It, and I, 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 cannot, I cannot believe it, actually. I actually cannot believe it. I mean, this is an incredible feat out of Serral as well. Like, Hero made a lot of mistakes, but Serral took every opportunity he got handed. This is... Oh, my God. I think this is actually probably one of the biggest top five comebacks I've seen in my life. Like, people often, they talk about the Tefal versus MVP series, but Tefal and MVP, they weren't considered... You know, Tefal wasn't considered to be a top five player. Hero's considered to be a top five player. I think this is the single biggest comeback I've seen between two players that are uh, top five player in the world no like this is because there's n there's not supposed to be big this big of a skill difference i don't think yeah, i can recall a single game where someone lost the lead yeah. this big yeah, i can't right now as well it wasn't even that i mean yeah he just completely misjudged the, the position the entire way through basically yeah it, that's just it right like it's there's, there's no. It's not like Hero is a, is an idiot. He just misjudged it. The game was weird because he probably didn't have on his uh, grand finals bingo card that Sarah was gonna play a two base Ling flood. He, he must have. He saw there was zero drones. He, he, yeah. he saw there was zero drones at the. Next I think he just kind of yeah. gaslit himself into thinking that there's no way that this is what Sarah played because honestly his response was not even that great to it and the build completely failed. So he might have been gaslighting himself into thinking that Serral still had like a, I don't know, something up his sleeve. And it just wasn't there. This is, a, this is an insane game. This was, uh, I mean, even, <laughs> like, so you have 20 Brutalords. Serral could have done nothing. This map is so massive. You can never run across the map with the with the Brutalords. He had Brutalord and Faster. Like, what is he going to do? I don't understand. I don't understand why he didn't just expand at any moment in time. This was an insane amount of tunnel vision of finishing the game that he usually, you know, he's he's known to have, but he didn't have for the first 15 minutes of the game at all. It's actually crazy. What actually is crazy as well is how well Serral fought every single time. Like, every single fight that he took was mental. Yeah. Like, that first fight, that was impossible to win. I or, or, no, the, I think it actually should... Well, not impossible, but very, very difficult. Sure, the Immortal count wasn't at six, but I think there were two, three Immortals in there. There were a couple of Archons. You had the Disruptors. And it happened so fast. And the moment Hero was in a slightly open position, he jumped on it, and he got a pretty yeah. even trade. And at that point, he's still behind. But then every fight after. And I think one of the cool things about Serral is that he can kind of... I feel like he really understood what was happening so well. Because you're never going to get an army of 18 Brutalords and Infestors in this case, in any other scenario, because you lose complete map control. Like what happened there in the end, increasing your Brutalord count, that is a sure way of getting outmined by Factor 3, you know? Because you can't be on the map anymore. That's an insane composition to go for. So it felt like he... He, he knew exactly what to do at every moment, and he understood how Hero's mind was in the... You know, what Hero was feeling or what Hero was thinking. I think... I, don't, yeah, I, I mean, it was probably the only way for him to come back. It's just hoping that his opponent just kept suiciding in. And he, he took every opportunity he had. This is a very impressive W. Very impressive from Serenia. Yeah, because, I mean... Uh, 
Yeah, no, but, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. the hero played very far from perfect, but hero still would have beaten I, everyone. I, 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 yeah, I don't think anyone else would have won this yeah. game. Yeah, first of all, I think most people would have left. <laughs> I, I would have left for yeah. sure. I would have left. 100%. Yeah, I think everyone's with you there, and I don't think anyone would be like, "Oh, Lambo left the game too early." Either it's like, ah, it, maybe even too late. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> like because Harold tried like a second Nidus and a third Nidus. They were, they were, they all got knocked down, and then yeah, it it all started going to crap with the five Oracle flying into the six queens. That's when it started. You said this would be a bad move, and it was a bad <laughs> move, and it was. <laughs> It, it was it's, it was the first one of 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 many. Well, there were the, it's funny because we were all obviously joking, and you always said, "This is, is I don't like this, but I don't care as well in this position." There were like three or four things. One of them was just following it up with double flea pigeon, a uh, double target flea pigeon, yeah, which was obviously unnecessary. Then flying the oracles in, then expanding towards the gold base instead of just taking normal bases, yeah, yeah, and this uh, kept happening a couple of times too many, yeah. And, and, yeah, so so we can explain all of these as well. So, well, I mean, the Oracle flying into the six queens, we don't need to, need to explain, but the double Stargate, you make the game more passive than it needs to be. So if you do yeah. something even just semi-aggressive, like you could play a four-gas blink follow-up, you could be going up to four bases or five bases, and your opponent is going to be stuck on two and a half mi bases of mining because you're so far up in worker count, and then you're just trading gateway units versus what might be like Ling Hydra, Serral, the only solution Serral has is to play three base lurker. Like that's it. And three base lurker is not playable at all. Like it's just not viable. You can double forge, you have complete map control. There's absolutely no way you can win. You take you can take the worst fights of your life the entire time and you just can't lose. So that's not so much the case with carriers, because you can't put actual pressure on your opponent with carriers. Because if there are six, seven queens out and a spore, the carriers just can't really do any damage, right? They're they're good. They're a good unit to have for a late game fight, but you're making the game much more passive. Then the expanding towards the gold. The reason why that's not so great is kind of what we saw in this game is that if the game actually goes into this more passive state, um, in this case, what happens? Hero really wanted that bottom right side base because it feels uncomfortable to start expanding to the left all of a sudden because you don't really have a, a strong presence there quite yet. So although it would have been possible, it feels uncomfortable. And then you kind of start focusing on these bases that are close to Serral, which Serral can do something about. Serral needs a very compact army to move in one go. So there's a couple of things there that by themselves wouldn't have been a big deal. And even if Hero wouldn't have taken the fights that he had or moved the way he did, shouldn't have been a big deal. But they still were probably the incorrect calls, given the situation he was in. And I think a lot of it just comes down to him just completely misunderstanding the spot he's in. Just for the, I, I, like the first 20... 22, 23 minutes of the game, he just didn't understand. Actually, t towards the end, at any point, he could have transitioned to a, to a ground army. At some point, he got forced into a ground transition, and it felt like he was completely fine, and then he could just split, take bases, and have have no problem. But it felt like he never understood where he was at. Yes. I think it was a little bit of laziness as well, because he was full wall towards the left. So it felt even more uncomfortable. To, to start taking these bases. And Sarah had like a link burrow there. I'm not sure if you ever tried yeah, to yeah, yeah, take yeah. a base yeah. there. Every single base had a link burrow on there as well. Yeah. Which is, this doesn't sound like a very big deal, but <laughs> it's really annoying that when you queue it up and your probe shows up, you can't build the base. And then players just get lazy, especially in like high pressure situations. It's like, oh, that base is taken. Let me try the next one. And then the next one is the one in the bottom right, which is the one that you shouldn't be taking. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not a very strong, you know, it's not a very strong, uh, what you call it, a deterrent in a way. But it's a little bit like when you enter the shop, you know, and you smell the breads from the bakery or you walk past the subway and you smell the subway smell. You weren't going to get a subway, but now, you know, you're pushed, you're being pushed in the direction. <laughs> that's what that's what the links do as well. It is the, is the subway smell of StarCraft 2. Although, you know, the standard subway smell, I don't actually think it is that good. Yeah, I I didn't even know there was a standard subway. No, 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 there is. If you, I think you'd recognize it as well. If you walk past the subway, and you you put the the nostrils open, you know, know they put in. I, I know that there's like a bakery smell for sure. No, it, uh, it's different. Oh, you mean actual bakeries? No, actual bakeries. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they want to smell like. Yeah. That doesn't just come natural as well. They they do that on purpose. Oh, you think they have the <laughs> the, the fragrance or something? No, they actually do, yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, I like that. 
Sarah looks very happy with himself. Hero's taking a long break after that game. And this was not a good scenario. We had a... Um, I, I checked the percentages before the game. I think it was a 5% chance that Sarah was going to 5-0, according to Ali Luck. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Much more likely after this game. Yeah. I, I still think Hero's going to come. Put some stuff, put some points on the board. Oh, yeah. Luna usually doesn't win cleanly in the grand finals. Doesn't matter who he's playing against. Could be Haas. Could be Dark. He usually doesn't win zero. Yeah. Oh, it was 8%. That's what the boys are saying in the chat. All right. Let's see. The chances of that 8% have uh, definitely gone up now that Cero is at 3-0, having uh, passed two of the hardest Protoss favored maps. Now we're entering Heartlet for our fourth game. How many maps has Cero dropped in the upper bracket? Zero, I think. He beat... Um, didn't he beat Maro 3-0 and then Rainer 4-0? And then what was... Uh, there must be one more opponent. Just eight players. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, Solar 3-0, Maru 3-0, Rainer 4-0. Now he's 0 <laughs> against 0. He hasn't dropped the map yet. It must be boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good problem to have, though. Actual champagne problems. Oh, what's Hero doing here? Oh! All right. A prepared cannon rush strategy. Maybe he saw that uh, Cyril didn't check for this when he goes 50 net. I like it. I like it. Overlord's going to be a little bit late. It's not going to scout this in time. This feels like a... Yeah, there's a proper so, timing. So the, the, the reason this is good against 50 net is because we delay the Overlord by a lot. So we don't see this on time. You need to check with drones, actually, in order to hold And this. no one does that. No one does that, yeah. No. Well, they send, I've seen Cyril do it, but... This is interesting cannon positioning uh, because all of them are exposed. So if there are full drone pools, I, I'm struggling here as a, a hero supporter. I'm struggling as well because this is not how you usually put your cannons. Yeah, there. <laughs> this is gonna go south, isn't it? One cannon finishes. Couple drones die. The probe managing to assist. No cancel on that cannon. That's pretty bad as well. First Z Zerling spawn. I mean, he will kill a bunch of probes here. Like a bunch of drones. It's not enough. Oh, second down. One more cannon finishes up, but the link count is fairly high. Um, we have a Zealot coming in behind this. Uh, this is simply not enough. This is no, simply it's... not enough. I, why didn't he put two cannons next to each other, at least? So there's less surface area. Like, next to, can't you just put them next to the pylon there, two cannons? Yeah, I think if this was the plan of not walling, you just all put them in a square. So at least yeah. one of the cannons is completely covered, and two of them has, have significantly less surface area on them. Um, maybe he believed he could, he could hide it for a bit longer, I'm not entirely sure, but this went not very well. Uh, Sarah's moving across the map here with the Lynx. As... Yeah, this game... <laughs> It should be extremely it's good our, here. It's our opposite of last game, basically. Someone in chat said he's up in workers. So Protoss usually is up in workers initially, always. Yeah. And usually the Zerg overtakes him at like 40 workers. So Cyril is going to overtake him now significantly earlier. Also, the second Nexus is just not done. Yeah. Which usually <laughs> the second Nexus is not that late. As well as the tech. The tech is super late. Uh, the one good thing for heroes is that Cyril... Uh, is gasless, so there won't be any speed, and he can try to abuse that. Yeah, he, he does need to get the info on that. He needs to get the read on the fact that there's no gas. And if he doesn't get that read, then he might just go home with the adapts at some point, which would be bad. Stargate's gonna get proxied here, uh, but even with a proxied Stargate, I, I don't think it's going to hit any key timings. If there's an Overlord on that right side covering the natural, then that Oracle will not be capable of doing anything. If there's no Overlord there, then maybe the Oracle can come in and get a couple of kills. That would be nice. But then all of a sudden your Stargate is vulnerable. There's a pretty big downside to proxying the Stargate. That's the fact that you're going to lose a Stargate. As I'm not sure if... Like, Hero hasn't been capable of getting close enough to scout the lack of speed. 
And I, I hope he just stays on the map with these Adepts. Hope he can get something done. Maybe take a faster third base here as well. I think all of that would be fairly nice. Okay, he's gonna finish this shade, surely. This is a finishing shade. I, I think it's... I think he knows there's no speed because he pulled every drone. Like, there's, it's impossible mm. for Zerg to pull every drone and have speed as well. I wish he finishes uh, this shade on, like, the non-creep area. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I feel like that would be really nice. It's gonna save up two oracles, which is a move that I actually think is very good. Yeah, especially because I don't think Cyril will expect it. He's going into the main now. He will see the lack of tech there, which is kind of a tell. But his queens are out of position very frequently for the adepts. Yeah. And I think it will be time soon that Cyril wants to saturate his third base. So if Cyril is impatient with his queen movement and starts walking towards the third base, the natural could be wide open. Yeah, there's no Overlord either on that top side. That's actually a pretty significant error here coming out of Cyril. And Queen's not on the right side of this hatch. He's going to lose a bunch of workers here. First, uh, first shot wasn't great. And then gets two workers or three queens in the main as well. This went way worse than I thought it would. This went terrible for Hero here. He's going to lose an Oracle. Does kill five drones, which is nice, I guess, but... It's not enough. What he needed was 9, 10, 11 drone kills and keeping the oracles alive. And that is not what he got here. He's going to follow this up with three more gateways. He already has to. As well as a, uh, a Twilight Council. Uh, yeah, he tried to proxy a gateway. So, I mean, that is that is naive, no? Proxying a gateway at the Stargate that you know is going to get spotted. Like, Zero had an Overlord in your main base this entire time. He knew the Stargate had to be somewhere. So you can just magically make oracles appear. So he's going to scout for that. In a way, he just showed his intention of well, was trying to proxy a gate. Uh, I, yeah. yeah, this it has is to rough. be Glaives or Blink uh, in Cyrus Might, for sure. Yeah. Can't really be anything else. This is the latest Glaives as well. I, there's, there's going to be freaking Roach speed out by the time this finishes. What does... He's getting plus one as well. Which surprises me because it doesn't do anything for, for yeah. let's say, two shot links and drones. I would have much preferred seeing uh, Blink here, to be honest. If we're going to go for an all-in, let it be Blink. Um, it's Lave adapts with plus one. They, yeah, I, 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 I'm not familiar with any, uh, any changes there in, uh, in interactions between units with the plus one. As the adapt count is still growing. What, what what is the best case scenario here for hero i guess let's um let's look at that maybe so I, okay one thing that could happen is if Cyril tries to go for walling the natural and he messes up the wall or like the wall starts after the adepts fly by or something like that right and you lose a bunch of drones that's something that could happen but even then you're fighting against a road speed player and you have no follow-up you have what one two oracles maybe you have no ability to build more oracles there's no robotics facility either. And then you and I don't even think that Cyril needs to go for a walling strategy because he has enough to just split up. <laughs> oh my god, he finishes on top of ten rows. Yeah, I mean what well what yeah, what else can he do? He can't just stand there either. Like it I mean this is terrible, but there is only bad options, I think. In a way he's getting way more done than I thought he would. Good control there on those adepts. Mm -hmm. Takes out eight drones. But yeah, I mean the moment these uh, this feels nice now, you know, you're partying. Having a good time. Seven shot of vodka. And then the hangover comes when the roaches move on onto your, your third and you realize you have nothing left. Yep. I mean, he's just dead. And Cyril knows it as well. It's not like Cyril is going to be an idiot and drone up here because there's no point. Cyril knows that with this type of investment, there's no way he has enough units at home. There's not even a battery here. These roaches have speed. They're moving quick. Links are coming in as reinforcements. Cyril is going to drone up behind... Um, that, that Link Flood, because he knows he's going to get the third kill. That's probably why he's building the drones. Because he knows that the third is gone. Um, now he's going to be moving in here. Ah, it's just, this game is absolutely over. I think it would have been cool if Sadler just let them live as a thank you for the last game, you know, like a fair play. <laughs> Pay you back. Give the ball back, yeah. <laughs> we can play another macro game if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Take up their greater right? You see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> he starts floating around with like six brood lords, <laughs> sniping outside <laughs> bases. <laughs> Entire map covered in creep. <laughs> There's no way. Oh no. All right, hero. Come on, buddy. I believe in you. Take a sip of that drink that you have there. Eat some of that ice.
You see, he put the ice cube in the mouth. All pro players do that. I do the same. I can't, I can't stop myself when there's... This is why America is such a bad place for me because they always give ice in your drinks. The reason I do it is because it's... Uh, you know, it's, it's not very common in Europe to get ice in your drinks, right? At uh-huh, least yeah. not for me. Also, I never drank yeah. fizzy drinks. I think with, with like, if you drink like a Coca-Cola, sometimes you get like one or two ice cubes. But in America, you get like a glass of water and the thing is filled with like 30 ice cubes. And I, you know, when I was a young man, Whenever I got an ice cube in my drink, I'd put it in my mouth. <laughs> ice cube. <laughs> so now whenever I'm in America, I'm constantly brain freezing myself because like 20 ice cubes in there and I'm fitting all of them in my mouth. And then when the the, the, the lady sees that they're gone, she comes back and fills it up. Oh, you like the ice? I'm like, yeah, I like the ice. More in there. Boom. <laughs> Fill it up again. I'm glad to see that Hero also does that. Yeah, I like the ice as well. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah this is i mean uh, yeah this is this is a rough final so far a lot of winnable games for hero man i i had so high hopes especially after the first game hero played quite well and even hero made played so well on the first game yeah that first game was actually super sick he actually made all the correct moves after his failures in the early game he played freaking well it's actually true. I forgot about the Equilibrium game. And he played he played some good games versus Rainer 2 yesterday. Oh man. Did did you rewatch some of the games or no? Uh I did not yet. Psy Delta is insane. I will watch it. I I have heard. That like, it's crazy. It's actually one of the that game made no, that was that was a sick game. Legit a very sick game. Ah. Uh. Someone earlier said, Protoss players don't get brain freeze for obvious reasons. <laughs> 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 I thought that was a good one. Very funny, buddy. You're banned forever, but that joke was worth it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Potentially our final map here of this best of nine. Uh, uh, Serial's up 4 0. It's going to go once again for that 15 hatch. Here we're going no scout. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe in our boy though. You know what this is the perfect time for? Pulling out a strategy that you like. The charge lock build. You want yeah. To. I want to see the charge lock build. This is. You know he pulled it out in the last game versus Rainer yesterday. Really? Yeah. Oh. And did it work? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The fights were a little bit weird, but he he did it really well. So at some, he started with a fight which I thought was gonna be bad, and then he just cleared the links and ran away. So there was like a bunch of roaches and a bunch of links, and I think Rainer thought that Hero was just gonna fight, and Hero did fight, but then just killed the links and ran off. And Rainer actually lost a lot of links there, which was like maybe 15 or so or 16, which felt pretty bad. And, and then he just kind of started running around. Actually, they really that game was very very good overall. Like there were quite a few mistakes but the game also was super high pressure and lots of action on the map the entire time both players made some uh, some minor hiccups but it, it's super fun to watch it's actually a very good game yeah i mean <clears throat> mistakes always make for the best games by far yeah the, the game where someone plays perfect are usually not fun to watch yeah because usually the other guy doesn't play perfect so it's just a stomp yeah, yeah. all right he was gonna kick off over here hero i want to see some zealots man I want you to run zealots all over this guy. Not gonna be a. It's not gonna be a gold base. Stalker first plus warp gate. And he's still going. Oh no, he's he did start the twilight. Okay. Okay. All right. What have we seen so far out of the uh, twilight? The twilight play that hero goes for. We've seen DT follow ups. Oh my god, we saw a crazy DT follow up yesterday. Oh, uh, are you there for that still or no? Blades into DTs? Yeah. I when he lost the prism before the DT warp in? No, I wasn't there. Oh, uh, you missed. But I, I I watched that one. Ah, so uh, you missed some bangers. Uh, 
That's bangers. <laughs> Dude, there was, well, there was some bangers. You can say a lot about it, but they were bangers. Every yeah. single one. As uh, Cyril's not going to be skipping speed. It's going to be quite late. That's nice for him. I don't think Hero is going to commit with these adepts. We've mentioned this before uh, in previous casts as well. But whenever you're playing Glaive builds, you never want to lose any adepts. Because every adept is so freaking important. The difference between six or eight adepts is huge. If you lose two adepts, you might as well just leave. So we're often seeing like these kind of these kind of half baked shades in the natural or into the main base, and that's gonna be about it. Hero with this particular build, he hits freaking hard as well. Like this is not a build you can make mistakes against, and he has multiple follow ups. He has the Robo Bay follow up. He's a Dark Shrine follow up. Um, we've seen these Immortal Drop follow ups as well. Uh, in which afterwards he goes into like some blink stalker crap like he, he can do it all he can really do it all that's what makes him dangerous that's what makes it hard to kind of have a catch-all response against him mm -hmm. yeah it's hero he literally could go double stack it as a follow-up as well ah, true he, he can yeah he can do whatever he wants forgot about that yeah he has played that type of stuff before the double stargates uh actually he went dt into double stargate yesterday that's what he did <laughs> Yeah. He also went immortal drop into double target. He he has a just a, an infinite amount of builds because he can make them up on the spot as well. Yeah, he's not bound by any of the rules that the others are bound by. Oh, drones are going to be evacuated from this base. Thirty-nine drones, as uh, the first roach are already on the way. Oh, Sarah's going to do the walling stuff. Blech. Disgusting. This base. This is something that has happened quite a bit in with, when people play against Hero. Is that this base takes a lot of damage, and then becomes so important for the Zerg to keep alive that they kind of feel forced into defending it. I love this spore walling, by the way. It makes it really easy to kind of... It's like closing and opening a depot, except you need to do more actions. A couple of queens here are already going down as uh, these roaches are just straight up fighting. I think so far so good for Serral, right? Yeah, so far so good. Um, as long as we trade somewhat evenly, especially if you don't lose any mining time, it's pretty good for for Zerg in this case, because the adepts don't scale as well as the roaches do. Yeah. Uh, he, he he also made sure that if the Warprism goes to the main, he's always in position there. He had the Zergans there. I think at this point he went there with the Queens. Uh, he's going to try to elevate everything up. There's a single Queen there. Hero doesn't believe he can go. He's going to lose a lot of adepts here. His plan was to go for an immortal attack follow-up. This went absolutely awful again. This was just a very good defense out of Serral. This was this was a textbook defense out of Serral. Like every move he made was perfect. And this is one of the reasons why we often don't see glaive builds, especially if the natural goes up on the natural location. Because these walls, if you continuously hit the spore wall perfectly, like Serral has been doing, you have the queens in the maze uh, in in the main base the entire time as well, with some links to assist. You're just not taking any damage. Now, there is still potential for a serious counterattack follow-up. Serral needs to be careful. He builds five overlords here at the same time. That feels like a bit of a mistake. Was deadly afraid of a large supply block. As he's adding in some gases as well. It's still only on 38 workers, by the way. So he might feel some pressure to drone up. But needs to be somewhat careful. Because the immortal count is very, very high. This is just going to get spotted, though, by the overlord. And he's going to get a cancel on the nexus. I, I actually would have been afraid for Serral if he didn't kill like 10 adapts when Hero tried yeah. to commit in with the elevator because the supplies are still somewhat even, which is pretty good if you have three immortals against roaches. Immortals lagging behind a little bit, and Hero really wants to commit. He's still producing immortals at home, and he's getting the fourth nexus behind it. So I think what Hero's looking for is just generally a good fight. And then at some point, when Serral overcommits to the defense at the front, he's going to try to shade in. But Serral yeah. still has the spore that he can always wall off with. So. Hero's trying to go for the straight-up engagement. I think he's going to let this finish, honestly. He's shading on top of the Ravagers. The Immortals are focus firing down the Roaches. The Adepts are just all dying very, very quickly, though. I think the Roach numbers are high enough to sustain against these Adepts. Now a new Adept Warpin tries to shade in. This will probably also be a finish. Yeah. Trying to go after the drones. That's a good call, because Immortals versus yeah. Roaches, if there's no links around, actually will perform pretty well. Hero might actually be doing it if he keeps these Immortals alive long enough. Adept still alive now going in towards the main base. Fourth Immortal should join the fight soon as a fifth Immortal is about to finish as well. We still have four gateways. This was a surprisingly good fight for Hero. It felt after that initial shade finish, it didn't go so well. This is a wild game to me. I'd love for him to just 
get some of these shields back on the immortals get a couple more warpins of adept and i love that he's building workers again because it's yeah. so easy to get stuck in the mindset of continuing to push if you get three four rounds of workers in and your opponent is just simply building units i think hero can at some point just move back home and all he needs is one more shade finish to kill five six seven drones or so i think this should maybe oh ah, there was no drones there so maybe good not to finish Another thing he can do is just fly four adepts into the main base at some point. The link count isn't high enough to be a serious threat to these immortals anyway, so you can get rid of some of these uh, adepts. He could also just continue fighting and win the game here, which is perhaps also just a very viable option, Lambo. I think this is the scariest option, because Serial is basically all inning him right now. I think the best is to go home with this, Ooh, awesome. because uh, he's he, he's out of adepts, and Serial has pure Ravager link, so these Immortals by themselves will not perform that well anymore. He also cannot warp in anymore, it's too many Ravagers. He now <laughs> uses all the to bite, so he can actually warp in, loses most of his Immortals. Yeah, I think he should have backed off, honestly. Uh, the moment he sees there's no drones mining at the natural anymore, because Serial is completely all inning. I'm not sure if Serial actually understands the position that he's in, because Hero has... 58 workers. Uh, Sarah might think this is still a two base because here took the other third. I think I'm that's not sure what he, he thinks. Ever saw it. I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. If at the point uh, where he scouted the lack of uh, drones in the natural, he would have picked up four adepts and recalled back home. I think he would have been in a really sick spot or just walked home at that point. Probably could have worked yeah. as well because he still had some adepts with his main army. I think five or six. So a, a surround isn't really viable. Double robotics pay. He's going to get both thermal lens and gravitic drive at the same time. This is a very high level pay that play that I don't want to see criticized. I, I would never dare to <laughs> criticize that. Sarah just scouted, by the way, that there's a fully mining base. At this point, it's too late, I think, for him to attack. So, yeah, he's deciding not to go for attack. So I, I still think this is good for Hero. Obviously, if he had six Immortals alive, the game will be... I, I'm never going to say the games are over again after watching yeah, this yeah, series. Yeah. But this <laughs> is a good spot. This is I'm a good spot. I'm not going for it, but yeah, it's, it's still a good spot. It would have been even better, though, without the fight. Yeah. And there's no creep heading towards that fort either. So if the prism eventually goes there or something manages to get there, um, there's a possibility that it gets sniped, especially now that it's still low. And that could be a pretty big deal. Is that That's the second robotics facility, right? Yep. Yeah. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Cero is in such a low drone count with such crappy eco that I think playing uh, some type of disruptor drop into a Colossus push here would actually be a very powerful thing to do. I wouldn't be as big a fan of just staying on pure Blink Stalker Disruptor. I really think that Colossus, with the complete lack of creep threat as well, would offer something of, of serious value. And that's coming from a guy that, as a general rule, hates Colossus. I agree. But at the same time, I don't think he's making Colossus. I think he's just making Disruptors and attack because that's usually how he likes to play. Um, <clears throat> with a very mobile army. Which still should be good, right? That's going to be a very hard for Serio to jump Hero's army with the lack of cruise threat. This is a nice Ling by though, gets one of the cannons. Not cancelled, tries to get the Nexus. He does have plus one on those links, so he will get it. Loses a lot of Zerglings for but... Yeah. I mean, that's, it is, I, I don't really care so much about this interaction, I think. It's not necessarily terrible for Hero. It's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. I don't think Hero really cared so much about that fort. That fort is a, a little bit like an insurance policy. Hero's going to be pushing in very aggressively. If he takes out a base and he has a fort, he's going to be up a base, which feels nice, rather than getting to a three base to three base scenario. I'd love for a hero to take down the rocks and move towards the right side. Attacking up a ramp here is going to be very uncomfortable against this Ravager count. Yeah, it will be. He, he, he will definitely kill the rocks. I mean, Sarah is trying to jump it now. He realizes both of the Disruptor shots, so he's trying to catch them, but he was very quick with pulling back towards his towards the rest of this army and yeah he's just uh, continuously using abusing the mobility of his units he should never really lose any of his stalkers while poking up while leaving the main bulk of his forces at the back completely off creep so i like the way heroes uh, yeah. orchestrating this attack these are really nice engagements stalkers in the front immortals in the far back kind of and then just just fishing. He's on a fishing expedition with these purification of us. Maybe he gets something, maybe he doesn't. Saro can't just sit there and keep getting hit. And I was just going to kite back to the Immortals. This is actually the perfect way to engage this. This is so well executed. I freaking love this. Yeah. And this is the, the game one hero that we're seeing here. He seems to be back. 
do some good engagements. He understands what he needs to do in order to win the game. We have Charge coming in behind this. I'd love for plus three to start, but I don't think it's necessary. Like, what is? how is Cero ever going to engage into this? It's always going to be off creep. The Purification Nova count is going to be high. There's still four Immortals in the back as well. Cero is trying. One thing I wouldn't mind... Oh, actually, 11 workers going down here on the side of Hero. One thing I wouldn't have minded is... Oh, he's going to lose more. Holy crap. That's actually bad because that puts him way more all in than he should be. It's still going to be fine because he's so far ahead. But that was a little bit sloppy. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of adapts in this army. Just for the, the, the tanking of like the, the links. Just dealing some extra damage against links. Because there's nothing to do with that. But it won't matter. Well executed attack. After an absolutely terrible initial glaive adapt push. Um, he, he pretty much got the W there with those immortals. Some good control out of him. Uh, some ballsy finishes. That shade on top of the ravagers felt bad. But ended up kind of working out. And then once you get one shade through that spore wall. It, it feels like. You know, the, the, things just fall apart so quickly for Zerk, especially if they're low drone count. It is funny to think about that if he didn't go for the elevator, you would have destroyed Serlo that push. Like, he would have had six more adapts, I think. Yeah. With the with the shade on, I think Serlo with the with his response where he where he blocked, he made units for a little bit too long, so he was not where he wanted to be with a drone count, uh, which is surprising. I think this also just maybe shows a little bit that you're starting from behind if you go 15 hatch against no scout. Because Heroes build is that little bit fa uh, faster yeah. and stronger. And Serral is a little bit behind in the economy. Yeah. Yeah, this was the worst build order matchup in the early game. <laughs> what, what do you think is the chance that Serral at any point is going to, you know... He's, got, he's going to build the pool as the as the first thing he does in the game. It's the first course of action. Cheeky little 12 pool Lambo. A 12 pool? I think it would be very high test. I mean, he, had, he has a lot of uh, a lot of maps to work with. That I think it would be just generally good to to imagine out. he does it four times in a row. There's no way Hero expects it. <laughs> he, he, okay, realistically, Hero is going to be playing a no scout one out of these four maps. But do you think if he twelve puts twice, he's going to still go no scout? Is is Hero really going to twelve put three times in a row after losing the last two maps? That's what Hero is thinking. He's gonna he's gonna no scout one of these maps. No, I agree. But if he starts 12 pulling twice. No. Or three Hero times won't already. Change course. He won't change course. He's, still, he's, he's <laughs> no scouting on Solaris. He's no scouting on Side Delta. Both of these maps. He doesn't give a crap. He actually after doesn't that. care. Yeah. I I understand that, but I think after getting 12 pulled twice, I think he, he, he would change it. I mean, we'll never find out because it's, I think the chance of Sarah 12 pulling twice and Hero <laughs> going no scout in neither of those games is extremely low. Yeah. Yeah, Aliak doesn't have stats for that <laughs> because it's <Yeah>. so unrealistic. <laughs> He's like not going to calculate everything here, mate. <laughs> Limited com computing space, not this garbage. <laughs> so far, Hero's win rate after putting an uh, ice cube in his mouth, 100%, by the way. Just wanted to point that out. True. Should maybe try to repeat that. <laughs> he wishes he was in America right now. There's no one to refill his drink with ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here goes the scout. I mean, he does have a wife, so that's true. She could be the supporting player here and bring him new ice cubes after new every ice cubes. every game. If you're listening in right now, this is your time to shine. <laughs> a couple of ice cubes in that in that cup. A couple of ice cubes. <laughs> Quick pass. All right, hatch goes down. So this is the uh, exactly the way that Sarah wants things to go. Wait, was it, what, what was this? Hero just scouted too late. Oh, this, this was he, a proper 16 hatch, no? Yeah, Hero uh, went... Uh, so what Hero did is he sent a probe. He didn't go 13 pylon, he sent a probe before the pylon. But I saw that he started the pylon at 140 and the probe was just behind the other probe. So basically he just did a normal pylon scout. Uh. And he was barely too late to block it, which is... Very bad. But yeah, I mean, if the 15 inch is bad against No Scout, then this is bad for Protoss. Yeah. It's not game losing by any means, but it is. I feel very happy when this happens to me as a Zerg. Yeah, definitely does spark joy. As yes, we're gonna have a very standard setup here for Serral. Quick speed. But Serral is not gonna be the guy that decides what happens in this game. He's never gonna be the guy in this matchup. Except he, on Rathu. Queen walks sometimes. He Queen walks. I, I, I'm actually calling Queen walk here. You're calling Queen Walk here? I'm call I'm calling I'm calling he's gonna Queen Walk. If this is a Stargate opener. Okay. 
that's intense. Is that a queen walk has been called if this is a uh, Stargate opener? Let's have a look at all of that. Let's see in the first place if Hero is even going to open up with a Stargate. It's going to be, of course, the one requirement that needs to be met. We don't see Warp Gate start, so I'm getting a good feeling. Mm -hmm. No Chrono on the Adept. It's because he didn't get the block. Yeah. He can't really do anything with it. You know, I feel like Protoss players have been chronoing adepts too much. This is my yeah. theory. I, I think as the standard, I, I I feel like it's not that good. I also feel like Protoss players should just walk non-chrono boosted adepts across the map more often. Because you're still forcing out the links then. Sure, it carries a bit more risk. I think Protoss players in general they stick a bit too much to the rules at times. You know, it's like, ah, I chrono boost two adepts, I can walk across the map. But why don't we walk across the map when it's technically not allowed anymore, you know? You're still going to be forcing out those links. These links most of the time get built anyway, because they want to cancel your third. And with two chrono boosted adepts, you wouldn't achieve very much anyway right now, because there's a natural in the natural location. So. These, these are my theories. What are your thoughts, Lambo? What, what, what exactly does the adapt do when he moves out? Because you die to a link flat 100% if you go no yeah, Okay, well, tough luck. See? Yeah, right, 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 right. I, I get why it's illegal, but <clears throat> I don't get what the, the adapt does. It's Yeah, you can finish the shade in the main. <laughs> Are you going no chronos and never finish the shade in the main? Yeah. You die always because the creep is too far, so you can never sh shade out. Yeah, tough it's luck. It's so late. Yeah, okay, but it doesn't matter. You see, this is one of those things where we follow the rules too much because we're afraid <laughs> of adepts dying. <laughs> okay. Is it, I, 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 no, the, 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 you're laughing now. This is, we get mocked into playing uh, theoretically perfect. And this is what's <laughs> wrong with Protoss right now. We play too theoretically perfect. <laughs> Whenever I look at Protoss games, that's the one thing that comes to mind. <laughs> the theory is too good. That's what I think to myself. And you watch a guy like Hero, he doesn't follow the rules. No theory, and he is perfect. That's what we need. Yeah. Maybe uh, you have a point there. Not <laughs> quite exactly the point you're making, but there is something there. For There's sure. something there for sure. Skip the second gate for a little bit, by the way. As for... Uh, did he right? He did, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So next is before second gate. That's actually really nice. It's a, it's a good way to, to make some cash. Make a quick buck here. He's going to snipe. Uh, one more. Two more. The tumor on the edge doesn't quite get sniped. Good creep denial here, initially. Zero has no links out on the map, which is going to be frustrating for him. We're going to get another four Adept Shade in. Ooh, I was feeling a finish there, but I feel like the Shade didn't reach far enough. He's going to try that again. That's such a sick position. Oh, well, he's not, but yeah. he could have. Yeah, there is a sick position there where you can finish yeah. all the Adepts in a line, and the Zerglings have no access. Yeah. It's, it's not a Queen Orb, by the way, because the Roach one is too late already. Yeah. So, he's not doing it. He would have won if he did it. It's triple Oracle into Charge, which is super dead against the uh, Queen Walk. He's playing the charge build. He's playing the charge build. Triple Oracle charge build. He's done this a couple of times now. Because he can switch yeah. it up. Sometimes he does it with two oracles. Sometimes with three. Sometimes he does it with one because he loses two oracles. But it still <laughs> is the same time as the triple oracle one. He's going to snipe one of these queens here. No, he's not. Now maybe get one or two of these drones. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. He's going to get a couple of zealot warpings already. This was a rough early game for Hero. He didn't get the block, he got no damage done with Oricus. Very very little damage that. All of this is true. Cero is on 70 drones and is producing roaches. Cero's position oh, is no, as good as it's gonna good. be. This is no, really it's bad. Even better now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's as good as it's gonna be until that happened. Because <laughs> now it's better, yeah. Cannon and battery behind all of this. Cannon's gonna get taken out. Oracle's coming back home. All of them activating their pulsar beam. And Sarah already throwing down an infestation pit. Oh no. Uh, he he made four adapts and he also warped on two fake stalkers. And he did fake out Sarah with it. Sarah is making yeah. drones right now. The thing is, was he far enough? I had to go 76 workers, infestation pit, banning nest, plus one, roach speed. Yeah. I think the answer is yes. <laughs> I think the answer is just straight yeah. up yes. I think his early game was too good. <sighs> oh, 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 oh. We're waiting for the second forge to go down at some point. Uh, but this is this is a really bad early game here for a hero. He needs to, he needs to get something. I mean, he... 
I understand why he stays on the map because moving back right now feels terrible. I, I, I don't think he can do that, but he also, it, it, there's just nothing to achieve here. Road speed is finishing up already. Hive is, he's gonna be done soon. He's getting baneling speed. We could have like just, oh, what I thought is we have a lot of zealots here. A couple should split off towards this top base. That could actually help him out. It's not going to happen. Once to jump on this roach army altogether. The oracles come in. It's going to snipe a lot of the queens. Zero is not really kiting. He was just running away with the roaches for a long, long time. Queens have gone down. The oracle count is still at three. Eleven drones falling as well. Hero's getting a lot of damage here with this. Way more than I ever thought he would or should for that matter. He's going to now try and sacrifice his zealots into those roaches. I don't think that's necessarily going to be a very good fight. More zealots are running in though. But so are more roaches, yeah. He will need to pull back. Doesn't have a fort base behind this. Um, doesn't have a second forge either. And Serral still is up in tech. I feel like if there was a fort base or a second forge pumping stuff, maybe we'd have a playable position. But now it feels like that trade still just wasn't good enough. He's going to lose a couple more zealots there on the tail end of all of that. As he uh, charged into those roaches. Serral perhaps being over eager here as well though. Not entirely sure if he can just cancel that fort base against that stalker count. I don't think he can. Serral realizes, moves back home and starts adrenal glands. Yeah, I think that play pool, that playable position completely depends on Serral though, because if Serral just attacks, he gave up a lot of zealots there. The reason, like, Serral had enough roaches to defend this, but he was slightly out of position, but the zealots were just chasing after drones and queens for most of it, so almost none of the, a lot of roaches basically survived that. The roach versus zealot trade wasn't that bad, so Serral is left with a huge army lead at this point. He also has his hive then, so I don't think he really wanted to go for an attack. Yeah. Uh, as, as we see the second forge go down now, and the fort next is finishing up. Yep. But Hero will need to buy some time. He also lost a lot of oracles during that fight, so if Serral maxes out on a lot of banelings, which is usually the counter to the hero style, it's going to be difficult for a hero. He, he needs to have always run bys on the map. He needs to kite from the center of the map, which is exactly what he's trying to do here. So he's making the right moves. He is playing from behind us. It, it will be an uphill battle for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the way that he wants to play it is have Zealous on the sides of the map, Stalkers ideally in the middle, and then Stasis Wards plus Oracle Presence near the, the Stalkers usually. It's kind of how you want to execute this. And he, he needs the... Well, I, I think he'll probably need to start transitioning into higher gas counts pretty soon. Because this is... I'm not sure how much longer it's going to be viable for him to play gateway units versus well, the army that, that Serral is going for. Because there's going to be good upgrades. Serral actually believes he can move across the map. That might be a little bit scary, although the bane count is high. Oracle's not entirely there. I'm not sure how much energy they have either. Um, we have three oracles here. Stalker count is very high though. Holy crap. Yeah, that's a good initial fight for Hero. So they're trying to distract, killing the 5th base without a cancel, by the way. And now also running in with the Bane, getting 12 workers. A lot of links are caught, but this is still good stuff from Sarah, who's uh, transitioning into an Ultra Cavern, also starting plus 3 already, and it's also way up in workers now. So I think Sarah just uh, saw the amount of Stalkers there, and the only thing he needs to adjust is wait until he has more Bane links, and then a Super Max, basically, against Mass Stalkers. Mm -hmm. Banelings do tend to, to trade very well over time. I like this little push here that Hero is doing. I'd love to see a Zealot run by being added in somewhere on the far left side, perhaps. Um, these Oracles, sadly, are, are pretty much out of out of energy as we have another Bane run by hitting a bunch of workers there. You can see in the picture in picture. Mm -hmm. 61 workers to 85. Hey, this, is, this is a serious issue. We're gonna need to do some damage. If you're hero here, you're gonna need to take out a base at least, and ideally the drones with it, because otherwise it's just gonna freaking suck. These traits are actually pretty okay. Serral is always fighting off creep here, and if at any point these oracles activate, if they potentially, hypothetically had energy, that could have been good, but they don't really seem to have that. Hero's gonna continue to kite back. Gonna have another attack here over at the third base, I think it is. Super battery is active. These oracles without energy are really hurting, uh, really hurting hero. He needs to get some energy on those, and I wouldn't even mind him adding in another Oracle at this point, because Serral seems very committed here to this comp. Hero actually getting some pretty okay trades, as well needs to start blinking back. He wasn't entirely paying attention there, probably still looking at his third base, but well, things are still going on. We're not quite seeing what. Once these roaches start getting attacked by the uh, Stalkers, that could be quite bad. Bailing count is pretty low. Links have largely disappeared. Hero might smell an opportunity here, Lambo. Yeah. 
all that hero needs to do is he, he needs to keep trading here. He needs to keep doing exactly what he's doing. And preferably get a fifth base up. Serhil has been really, really good at denying that fifth base over and over again with that group of links. And he's he's checking on both bases consistently. So Hero can't keep expanding, but as long as he keeps out trading him at the pace he's doing right now, he still has a shot in this game. Good stasis ward hits. Offensive blink because a lot of Serhil's units are frozen right now, but that also means that the stalkers can't blink back. Yeah. That, that also means that a lot of stalkers are dying and the one thing that keeps Hero alive is the unit retention that he has. Serious units are also very low. Hero losing 14 more workers. It kind of feels like now or never for him. He focus fire the hatchery I think with a little bit too many stalkers there. Trying to blink out. These stalkers are so low in HP that I think the Lynx can manage to thwart this attack. And uh, I think it was barely not good enough because he just kept dying to these runbys. He kept losing the workers. Versus Really not that many units that Serhil committed towards the other side of the map. And the last fight especially was not good. He Serhil almost evened up the resources lost actually. Because Serhil was d down 3k before that fight started. And now he's uh, almost 1.5 behind. Yeah. The trades there were good. Ultra's popping out as well. Anabolic Synthesis is about to finish up. It's going to be a big upgrade for him. As um, the Bane account doesn't need to be quite as high anymore in that case. Banelings are... Ooh, look at that. Like a heat-seeking missile going for these Zealots. Um... I, yeah, these, if these, all these zealots die, that's a serious issue. He needs to split them up somewhat eff effectively here somehow. Uh, yeah, he's, he's just gonna lose them. And, and that's his zealot presence that he potentially still could have had. Executing run bites is gonna be much harder as well now that there's ultras out on the map. Zealots are just not as good against that. We're gonna have another run by uh, hitting the, the third and potentially even the natural here as well. As it, it feels like heroes' uh, chances of winning this game are starting to uh, quickly decrease. Lost 13 more workers. I, I'm very impressed by his ability to, to come back into these types of games though, similar to how he did it on Equilibrium. This felt really close once again and it wasn't decided by that early game, despite it being very bad. No, it ended up kind of being decided by the fact that he couldn't deal well enough with the runbys of his opponent. And yeah, now he's just so far behind. Yeah, I mean, if he plays like this and from an even early game, I think the game looks entirely different. Yeah. Uh, Sir, Sir, if you, if he wasn't ahead, he wouldn't have the extra units that he can send to the counterattack. He would, he would probably still do the counterattack, so then he would take worse trades in the main army. You can't just have everything if you, if you're behind. Uh, sadly, the thing is, Hero was behind. He's calling GG. Well played. And Cyril wins Masters Colosseum five to one. Oh, double thumbs up. And he's showing off his bicep. Just his right one. That's his stronger one, is what he told me. He's pretty happy. Very big. What do you think? Yeah, crazy. I mean, he won the playoffs with only dropping one map. I know he lost to Maru in the in the group stage. I guess it made him angry. And overall, very... The, the games were very exciting. There were some back-and-forth games. It's just sad that... Uh, they ended up in in one direction, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is pretty sad. Okay, we're ah. Uh... Oh, Sarah has to do an interview on the Chinese stream. I asked him yeah, if he I mean... wanted to do an interview, <laughs> and he said I have to do on the Chinese stream, which basically means that he wanted to come to us. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, we'll just listen to that then, right? We'll backseat yeah, his answers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> okay. Good. We thought you were more important than the mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> well, they haven't been doing any winners' interviews, so. I mean, obviously, at the, at the end of the tournament, they were doing winners' interviews. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah it happens. The managers want seven. They give them seventeen k dollars. They at least want one interview. They want one interview. That's allowed. They can have it. Wow, very big. <sighs> Freaking hero, man. I was impressed by him this tournament, though, altogether. He's, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think he played poor. Oh, I mean, some games he played poor, but whenever he got into these actual games with the, the kiss, the hero style that he played, it looked so freaking strong when he was playing it. That's yeah, a good style. It yeah. is good to be able to play it, especially because it forces Zerk to, to, to play differently. It, since most other players are not playing it anymore, we don't tend to open with as much plus one melee, so then the style becomes stronger again, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Ay, 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 ay. 
When is this interview gonna start? Let's see if there's anything we need to do shoutouts for. Oh, real fast. All right. Over on Twitch, we got an anonymous gifter gifting a tier one sub to Showtime. So welcome aboard Showtime. Good to have you here, buddy. Jackalop TTV with Twitch Prime, Heaven SC with 110 people raid. Oh, someone redeemed a wink as well. I'm gonna do that after everything is done. Thank you, Boomsos with a Twitch Prime. Knoi with a gifted tier one sub. Sensios Ha with a five gifted community sub. And then next door, Matt, Moobel, all Twitch Prime, Kush, Twitch Prime. Thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. Over on the YouTube side of things, we have Joachim Fisher with a level two subscriber. No level ones here. And Tuk de, de DK, Jesus Christ. I just want to support your channel. I really enjoy the live stream you did with the Mask Coliseum. Much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too for the 50 Danish crowner. Very cool. Ooh. Um, let's see. Is this uh, interview going yet? No, not quite. Any thoughts on Katowice after this, Lambo? Sure, we, we can go over it. I mean, you, mean, you, you, you want to do it now while we wait for the interview? Yeah, right. sure. I mean, Hero Hero is just generally looking strong. He has a hard group, though, because he has very, very, very little points. Because the entire system is based off a snowball <laughs> of GSL, which uh, then set him up for failure, pretty much, mm -hmm. in the actual offline events. So... Still a hard group for him, but that group after this performance, because Rainer also looked super good, looks even more scary. The second, third, and fourth place finisher from this tournament are all in the same uh, Katowice group, so that one looks very deadly, and it's the one I'm looking forward to the most. That's group D. D for death. D for death. Dark Maru, Rainer, Hero, Showtime, Cyan. Yeah, I think it has... Uh, it has this... Well, almost the strongest player in any position, right? Except for yeah, maybe the number one position? Yeah, the number one position, not the case. And I think you can make... Maybe even the third position, because Clem might be better than Dark. And Maru beyond Cure Solar. I think Maru probably stronger, because Maru looked good this tournament. Rainer in third is better than all the other thirds. Hero in fourth is better than all the other fourths. And for with sure. Showtime, you could make a case for... Right? Shin, I guess. Shin. Yeah. yeah, and Cyan for sure. It's but the last the last seat doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, for the difficulty of the group, yeah. it's always yeah. gonna be the easiest. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. This, this is a rough freaking group altogether for sure. General, some wild some wild games gonna happen there. Based on this tournament, who are, who are we expecting? Uh, because we have uh, it's it's gonna be a round of twelve system, right? So mm -hmm. one player is going to go straight into the quarterfinals out of each group. And then two players will make it into the round of 12 out of these groups. It's going to be ranked two and three. Um, so if we look at group A, I, the seed one there, I'm not even sure if the seed one is necessarily going to advance. I do think that Gumio is going to advance, but mm, I'm kind of feeling a second or a third place. It's it's crazy because Gumio is first seed because he got so far in the GSL, right? Yeah. And then he also did decently in the tournaments after, but I don't think he, right now he's a top 10 player even. I, yeah. I wouldn't call him. I don't think that's too crazy to say. And uh, so, yeah, I think Solar is definitely the favorite in this Same. group for, for for first place. And then afterwards, I'd probably say it's relatively open, but Gumiho, Gabe, Spirit, a little bit favored over the Americans. Yeah. But definitely upset upset potential. Scarlet is, tends to perform well against uh, Koreans. Also, is good against Terran. Terran. Yeah. yeah. And Trigger also, is by far, his best matchup is against Terran. Terran, so. yeah. Could definitely, yeah, yeah. Both of them could potentially get out, but could also ruin the group for someone, right? So th they they could even advance, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they could get if, out if they beat yeah. each other and then they beat Gape and Spirit. Yeah, yeah. That is it's, not a very unrealistic scenario at all yeah. for Trigger or Scarlet. Yeah, I agree. Um, and with Scarlet, you could even see something there in a ZVZ versus Solar. For I feel sure, like he performed yeah, relatively sure. well against Gumio before. They got your your Group B. We got Clam Cure, Oliveira, Bunny, Shin, Stats. I'd be surprised if Shin doesn't make it out of this group. Really? That's yeah. a that's a bold call. I, I mean, four Terrans in a group. All he needs to do is play against Terrans. He has a lot of Terran friends that are pretty good. I I don't know. I I and I think mechanically he's he's, he's sound. I, I yeah. Think, I I think Bunny is probably overrated by a lot of uh, people based on how good he was in the past. But I don't think 
well, if he, if he turns it off, if he if he practices, obviously I don't know. But I think lately he's not been as good anymore. So I would definitely favor Shin over Bunny. Yeah. But I favor Clem and Kuro over Shin for sure, even though it's Kuro's worst matchup. And then I think Oliveira will have something prepared for him, like specific strategies. So mm. I I think this is scary. I think he can even lose his stats honestly because it's PVZ prepared. Yeah, that. prepared matchup. I, I, I wouldn't say he's favored to, to, to get. I, I, I think he's gonna get out of group. Right? I think he's gonna get out of group. I think he's gonna get out. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah, and then Clem, I'm... Clem Cure favorites, and then Shin maybe. Yeah, yeah. The problem is Clem and Cure are the strong favorites actually. Yeah. So if Oliveira just beats Shin. Yeah. Or even Bunny, like Bunny can, you know, bust out his CC first. It's best of threes. It's you can bust out his two base lands. Anything can happen. I do. I do have to say I'm a little bit... I look at this group and I'm a little bit scared for Clem because TVT still is his worst matchup even though he's gotten a lot better at it. I'm slightly afraid just looking at this. This is the typical group where the old Clem would have lost. I know the new and improved Clem is sick in all matchups, but... Yeah, it still looks scary. It's a scary, it's a yeah. scary looking group. It is. And Group C, Cero, Bian, Astrea, Kalazur, Skillis, Firefly. Um... I, I think we don't really... Like, in my mind, Cero and Beyond are a level above the other. Cero is a level above Beyond. Beyond is a level above the rest. Yeah. Um, and then we have, I think, four players that are very close to one another in skill. I think this is four players where all of them are going to be insanely happy when they advance <laughs> to the playoffs. So. Yeah. I, I don't really... I think Estrella has more experience in this type of situation, and I would call him slight, slightly favored over the others. But in terms of like Emma Mark, these guys are exactly the same, all of them. Firefly so. is pretty crazy though. I Firefly hope. is insane, especially in the World Team League. Yeah, I've he's, never he's, seen he him can prepare. He's a lot time. He has a long time to prepare. I think he's uh, he's he's good at that. He's one of the guys that I look at when it comes to build orders, and I really appreciate the stuff that he does. Like mm -hmm. he's he's very good at optimizing stuff. Uh, you, you can you can see that things flow well. He's hitting very tight timings. He's not afraid to cut useless things like probes out of his builds to hit a little bit harder like his all-ins really hit like all-ins it's it's powerful but yeah it's a it's a wild group it's yeah, i think anything can happen and there as well you you, you kind of have to be a bit afraid is that skillers and australia both have performed quite well in pvt matchups before um so it's even for beyond like it's not a given that he necessarily advances there in second or in first place um so yeah it's uh Mm -hmm. Weirder things have happened, I think. It, interview is starting, by the way. At least I see Cyril on the screen. Is it? Oh, I do see Cyril on the screen. Oh, they forgot to turn off the music. <laughs> it's heard, so I just wanted to have some, basically, suit over, over uh, Oracle VC on there, and uh, that's just normal, normal Ovi spot, and it happened to see the gate, so. I was kind of thinking here I might do something like that, but uh, I did see it accidentally. I have no clue what they're saying. And they're also playing music during all of it. Yeah, it's an accident. The production forgot to turn off the music. Or down at least. Hey, this is useless. I can't hear nothing. I muted it. This is gonna get everything kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> can get copyright strike five times for this. <laughs> this no, they thing? make their own music, I think, no? Yeah, I'll mute it in between. Nothing's happening now, guys. Don't worry. So uh, there is uh, the, the second question is on the uh, map of Red Hus Station. Uh, at the beginning, you went really super aggressive, but uh, it didn't work out. Then you got a little bit, uh, you know, back on. Uh, you got it back uh, later on your uh, macro play. How did the mind work? Well, yeah, the start wasn't great. Um, I think I messed up my build. Well, not my build. That was actually. I saw Scarlet do it, so I copied it from her. But uh, yeah, I accidentally made a tumor with my. When I did the 90s, I made a tumor, so 
I didn't have two transfuses, which was a little bit of a mistake. I'm not sure if they would work otherwise. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, after that, I didn't like my spot too much, but uh, I just stayed in it, tried to make some magic happen with the investors. And uh, I think he just gave me too much time. He should have just tried to kill me a bit faster. But uh, yeah, that was a little bit his mistake to lose that one for sure. I didn't like my spot too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that I say it? when I lose two adapts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, 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 I'm not a fan of this interview. I think I'm just gonna cut it short. If you guys want to watch the interview, you can, you can go watch it somewhere else. This is, it's, it's too, it's too chaotic for me. I don't want to get everything uh, striked for this. So uh, I think it's gonna be it for me today. All right, Lambo, thanks for being around. Yep, thank you uh, for having me. It was yeah, very yeah. fun. My pleasure. And uh, yeah, we'll be back soon, guys. I think next, when does it start, the Katowice stuff? Because we're casting that as well. Exactly. The people kept asking and you just ignored the people in chat. I mean, you generally tend to do that. But they, they ask, Harrison, why are you not in the tournament? Where are you? They they didn't see us in the groups. But they see us in the group. We didn't qualify. Is, <laughs> the answer is we wanted to cast. We wanted to cast. Sorry, we wanted to cast. <laughs> that was the answer. <laughs> I almost got the answer wrong there. This was a simple question too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. if you if you guys want to find us, it's uh, ESL Institute C, I think. Yeah, yeah, ESL Stream C. I think we're also going to be on YouTube. I think they they double stream it. Nice. Yeah. So then we'll, we'll have the the double dip again, because I know a lot of people they get their Twitch blocked on their work, but their YouTube can be blocked because they need to Google tutorials on how to do things often. <laughs> so they, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's actually the reason. So. It's, a, it's very good for them. They can pretend to be working while they're watching the C stream. All right, that's going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I, I don't want to bother Cheryl for an interview after this. He's already done an interview, yeah, but this interview is moving too slow with the translation in between and the music over the question. I can't hear anything. It's triggering me. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks all for watching. I hope we see you all next time. And uh, yeah, that's it. Ciao, ciao. Thanks, Lambo. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I see. Wait, did I miss any shout-outs actually before? Oh yeah, sorry, Grok No No with the Twitch Prime, Dvezic with the Twitch Prime as well, 10 minutes ago, I missed both of these, thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate that. Um, oh yeah, so a final shout out for the YouTube frogs, if you have uh, Amazon Prime, uh, you get a free Twitch Prime subscription, which you can use on my Twitch channel, so if you go to twitch.tv slash hearthstem, uh, you can use it there for free, it helps me out, it gives me like 3 bucks or so, which is nice. Um, and it doesn't cost you anything if you already have Amazon Prime or Amazon X. I don't, I'm not even sure what it's called. But yeah, just uh, something to keep in mind. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao.